You're looking down the back straightaway of America's fastest super speedway. More than 3,000 feet from turn two to turn three. You come out of turn two, looks like threading a needle as you sweep up into that 36 degree banking and we're set to go here for 500 miles there. Let's look at some of the keys to the race to winning here at Talladega. First of all, easy, careful with that bump draft. Not a problem, but make sure you do it on the straightaways, not in the corners and do not slam draft, just a little bump draft. Avoid the big one. Sometimes you can't avoid it. Just be lucky enough not to be in it. And then thirdly, right place near the end. Let's go back to the Daytona 500. Mark Martin led the last 12 to 15 laps, but you know what? He wasn't in the right spot. Kevin Harvick led the last lap. DW, I think we actually have one more key you'd like to mention. Yeah, the yellow line, Larry. You got to pay attention to that. Don't go below that yellow line or you'll be in the pits. Out of bounds. One unique facet of this 2.66 mile racetrack is the location of the start finish line. You see them sweep off turn four and come down to the trioval and right at the center of pit road. If this were Daytona, the start finish line would be there. However, when Bill France built this track in 1969, they wanted to sell the seats that were down past pit road and make those premier seats down in this area. So he put his start finish line here. And in yesterday's race, in that distance from where the start finish line is at Daytona to where it is here, Bobby Labonte beat Tony Stewart. I'll tell you one thing, that has been the deciding factor in many races here, just like yesterday. Get some pace lap stories from Pit Road. Chris Devota. Always nervous, despite 26 starts here. That's what Jeff Burton says he feels every time he climbs into a race car at Talladega. He thinks about the big one. He strategizes how to miss it. Now, once the race settles in, he calms down. But until then, and that means right now, Jeff Burton is about ready to jump out of his fire suit. To Steve Burns. Krista, Tony Stewart has two wins at Daytona. He's finished second here six times. With all his success on restrictor plate tracks, he's not a big fan of them for the very reason D you mentioned you have to have help. Tony doesn't like relying on anybody else. His team has left a motivational message on his dashboard. Stay focused, Dick Bergren. Now, Kyle Busch has endured four huge crashes in the last two and a half weeks. He starts in the 13th position today. No doubt he is thinking about finishing this race without another wreck. Matt Yoakum. Veteran spotter Stevie Reeves told me the thing that impressed him the most about his driver Jimmy Johnson during practice was he was so patient and yet it shows in his racing resume. He's won two of the last five play races and while Stacy on the racetrack, it takes a combo platter, the total package to win here. And right here is the six foot pathway behind all the pit boxes. This is where you'll be seeing the crew members running back and forth, trying to make deals, Mike Joy, as we get close to pit stops all throughout the day. Thanks, Matt. We're ready to race. Huge crowd in what has become the capital of Junior Nation in the heart of Alabama, NASCAR's traditional fans fill this place twice a year to watch pack racing, bump drafting, and usually exciting finishes. What do the drivers think about racing at Talladega? It's a 500 mile chess match, is what it's like. I mean, I'm a better checker player than I am a chess player. That's why I've run second so many times and not won. All in all, it's just a, it's a tough, competitive, challenging race because everybody's right there on top of each other the whole time and, you know, we're always packed up two, three, four wide sometimes. It gets very, very aggressive out there. You know, we're easily going to be three wide throughout this whole race. Uh, track position is going to be tough to get and staying out of the big one uh, as usual. Um, you know, I'm not sure if it's going to come early in the middle or late, but it's coming. Anticipation. Let's and sometimes if, frustration here. Let's see if that young man is starting on the front row again here at Talladega. David Gilliland, that's DW in the Fox Sports booth. But you got a copy. Oh, yeah, I got the last clear. All right, is that Big Bertha? Yes, sir, it is, man. I had so much fun with her, too, at uh, Daytona. We brought her back here, and it's been great so far. I was going to say, man, you did a great job at Daytona from the front row, from the pole. Uh, how do you feel about today's race? So great, DW. This uh, we worked a lot on drafting with this car, and uh, it drove really good. The draft we made one qualifying run, and and uh, just kind of figured qualifying would be what it was. But uh, it was real fast in qualifying, but we were happier with it in the draft. A lot of guys have gotten their first win here, bud. Stand on the gas, turn left, and have fun. You got it. Thanks.
David Gilliland will start outside. Jeff Gordon on the front row. In the driver's meeting today, at the end of David Hoot's instructions to drivers, he asks, are there any questions? The pole sitter, Jeff Gordon, had one. He said, can you police us on the bump draft? I'm going to be able to stand here today and tell you, all right, you guys can't touch each other on the racetrack because that's not NASCAR racing. But you, you need to be conscious about it at a place, particularly Talladega with a new surface and being able to, to move around more freely than you could time, this time last year. And most of you were here in October. Uh, so the only, the, only, the, the only thing we can do is just say, guys, you know, be conscious about it. But if, if you get out of consciousness on it, just be prepared for us. And we're not going to argue about it or debate it. It's just it, we just had to do it. Bump drafting is accepted. Slam drafting to shove a car out of the way or shove a car forward to try to give you a place to move out a line and go, that will be dealt with harshly. That was Mike Helton's response. And what Jeff Gordon said was, we're the athletes. We're out there full of adrenaline in competition. It's hard for us to police ourselves. There are accidents, and then there are things that are intentionally done. That's what you have to avoid. Let's look at our race analysis right here for this 500 mile race. Here you see 188 laps, pit road speed 55 miles per hour, pit window 46 to 48 laps, an impound race, David Streamy to the rear for adjustments. Just real quick, back to the front row, Jeff Gordon, David Gilliland, two completely different makes. NASCAR inspection, over a thousand working parts, they absolutely tied down to the thousandths of a second in qualifying. The tiebreaker, though, who's the highest in the points? That's the reason Jeff Gordon's on the pole, Gillen's on the outside pole. 17 cars came here outside the top 35 in owner points. Here are the ones who failed to make the field. Ken Schrader had competed in every restrictor plate race. So had Michael Waltrip and Mark Martin, who were not entered here. So that streak is over. Also, it's the first time the Wood Brothers, number 21, has failed to make a Talladega race since 2000. DW, five wide, four wide. It won't be the first time I tell you today. Reach up there and pull those belts tight one more time. All right, folks, we're at the capital of Boogity. This is where it all gets going right here. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, boys. second here they come to complete the first of 188 laps it's like winding up a great big old rubber band you get her wound up and let her fly jeff gordon he'll lead lap one five more quarters points he has led a lap in eight of nine races in 2007 now that's sterling marlin in the 14 gilliland the 38 right behind gordon Got to be careful right now. These cars are a little free on the get-go here. Uh, and you get side by side, the back end wants to suck around. Got to be careful that for a few laps. Pressure build up, burn off a little fuel. Here comes Marlin on the outside. The veteran from Columbia, Tennessee, whose dad raced here when the track first opened. Look at Cuckoo's boy go. <laughs> He's being pushed by Kenny Wallace in that 78 car with Jimmy Johnson in the 48. All three of those cars, three different teams, three Hendrick engines in that outside line. Lap is led by Marlin. Mike, we've got our score and monitor up here that says if a, if a car changed positions, 41 of 43 positions changed that lap right there. And you know, watching the race yesterday, that high line was very, very effective. A little bump drafting. 
You'll see a lot of it today. Steve Burns. Mike, great note on Sterling Marlin. He's led 1,004 laps in restrictor plate racing, but that is the first lap he's led on a plate race in the last 12 events. And Steve, biggest thing he's trying to do is finish this race and maybe get his first top 10 finish of 2007. We just saw Jimmy Johnson get in the back of Kenny Wallace in the 78 car. A little bump draft that wheeled him through the trial here. Very, very treacherous through the trial. And watch the third lane. Way on the outside comes Jeff Green with Tony Stewart in tow and a group behind them. This is just like any other track we go to. That high line gets a lot of momentum when you start off the corner onto the back straightaway. Looking from Tony Stewart back at the Domino's car of David Rudiman. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, that looked like five wide to me, boys, <laughs> for a moment. Woo yeah, we don't get excited about three wide anymore. It's when they go four and five wide at over 190 miles per hour. And they will as they come down this short chute, 1,600 feet to the tri-oval. Then they'll fan out here across from Pitt Road into four abreast on occasion and sometimes five. I can't believe Sterling just sitting there and just pulling this crowd right around here. What a, what a great run for him right off the get-go. And here comes Kenny Wallace in the 78. Wallace, who had to time his way in the field and did so, but he's got no help. Nobody close enough to him to push him along, <laughs> so Marlon and Gordon go back to the front. What do you mean he's got no help? There's 42 <laughs> guys behind him. <laughs> Get out here and push me, somebody. Not surprised to see Kenny Wallace running good here, though. We mentioned Hendrick Power. Remember the last race Dale Earnhardt won here? Kenny Wallace pushed him to the start-finish line for Dale to win that race. He really understands the draft well. Well, you got to admit, it's pretty, pretty exciting for Sterling Marlin and Kenny Wallace to be up here fighting with Jeff Gordon and company. And now, Dick, our pole sitter Gordon has his favorite wingman, Jimmy Johnson, right on his bumper. Uh, he does indeed. He ran those first several laps right on the bottom. And before the race started, he urged his spotters to be sure and tell him when somebody was closing on the outside of him. Gordon, in his pre-race comments, has minced no words whatever. He said it's not a question of if the big one's going to happen. It's only a question of when. He is very focused on avoiding running into anybody today. That's the way you win the race here at Talladega. Hey, Mike. Larry, Kenny Wallace went by here last time in fifth place. See where he is when he comes by this time. It looks like about 25th. <laughs> he was in the sucker hole yeah. in the middle. He got he, shuffled. He got zapped. <laughs> we see teammates working together early. On the inside line toward the front, David Gilliland, outside pole sitter, has teamed up with his Robert Yates Ford teammate, Ricky Rudd. Mid-pack, Kurt Busch and Ryan Newman in the Penske Dodges running nose to tail. And toward the back, two of the Childress Chevys, Kevin Harvick and Jeff Burton, have teamed together. That's cooperation, not cooperation. Teamwork right now, and you'll do that early on. Get up to the front, but then uh, all bets are off once you get there. DW, I got to an answer for your question. Kenny Wallace came by 32nd that time. <laughs> I know. Wow. <laughs> From second to 32nd in yeah. two laps. You said he needed somebody to push him, but not backwards. <laughs> Jeff Gordon out front. For the third lap, Sterling Marlin led four. Marlin, a two-time winner here when he drove those Morgan McClure Chevrolets powered by Runt Pinton's engines. Now, I love the, what they've done to this racetrack. The surface is absolutely incredible. But there's a little groove through the trial that's a little disturbing to me. When you get down in that bottom lane, there's a groove there that the car catches, and every now and then, moves it around quite a bit. But, Darrell, is that part of the problem? The drivers almost get too comfortable because this place has so much grip. Yep, there's a car way down below the yellow line, too, and that's not good. Carl Edwards. Yellow line is out of bounds. If you go below the yellow line and advance your position, expect to make an unexpected trip to pit road for penalty. You know, Mike, we were talking about teammates. Look behind Jeff Gordon. You see Greg Biffle in that 16 car, Matt Kenseth in the 17. They have been hooked up together for the last few laps trying to get up there to Gordon in the 24. Okay, Mr. Crew Chief, uh, what's the strategy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, let me get back with you. I'm not sure just yet. I'll tell you Jeff Gordon's strategy. The best way to stay out of trouble is to stay out in front of it. And I that's where he it. wants to be all day. That's what I always told him. And he said, what can we do to help you? I said, give me a really fast car. <laughs> Krista. 
You guys mentioned Matt Kenseth. You know, he has been surprisingly good here. You always think of the Chevy dominance. Matt Kenseth has had three consecutive top 10 finishes here. He was sixth in this race last year, fourth in the fall. He said the only things he's not very good at is picking the partners down the stretch. Right now, he is a great partner for his teammate, as you said, Greg Biffle. You know, Chris, they were riding with Tony Stewart there in the 20 car, the orange car on the inside. I think he's also made that statement. He's finished second here like six times. He said he just never gets with the right guy on the last lap. One thing that Tony's a little worried about, though, this is not his favorite car. He lost that at Daytona, the car that he had finished six, second six times in doesn't exist anymore. Familiar faces up front. Gordon and Stewart pull this train around Talladega. Today's race on Fox presented by Domino's Pizza, sponsored by Best Buy. Make this the summer to wow, only at Best Buy. By Chevy, the most wins in NASCAR history, an American revolution. By Nextel, only from Sprint, helping NASCAR Nextel Cup fans get more done. And by Domino's Double Zero Deal, the official pizza of NASCAR. Still triple wide around Talladega, almost had a lead change. Jeff Gordon, the pole sitter, and Sterling Marlin have been trading it back and forth. Three lead changes among two drivers so far. You're encouraged to participate in today's Domino's Hot Lap. Which one of today's top five qualifiers, there they are at the bottom of your screen, will be the first to cross the finish line on the halfway lap, lap 94? Text the letter corresponding to your selection to Fox SP on any wireless phone, and you could win the ultimate fan experience at the Michigan race in August. Just look at those cars, Mike. Look how the nose never moves. Look how close to the track it is. Smooth as silk. Contrary to what we used to have here before oh, they the repay. Hop around, and that's how they got in trouble, hopping around and getting into each other. And that's why we can have this incredible racing like this. From Jimmy Johnson looking ahead to Sterling Marlin, the race leader. That's how you know you got a good race car, Mike. Sterling fell back a little bit, was able to drive right back up there and get in the lead again. That's a good race car. You just look at that gaggle of cars. Right now, we've got 41 cars less than three seconds separating from force first to 41st. Marlin's last win five years ago in Darlington, South Carolina, where we'll be in a couple of weeks. Now, here's Dale Earnhardt Jr., who has worked his way up to 22nd position from 36. Dick? Well, before the race, he promised that the car was going to go straight to the front. But the strategy changed a little bit when Earnhardt looked ahead of him and saw them running three and four wide. So he sort of hung out in the back for a few laps, then decided to make his move, and forward he goes. Meanwhile, Kyle Busch has dropped all the way back to the 40th position. That, by design, he is doing everything he can to avoid another crash. Yesterday, seven times, side over side, barrel roll on fire. Kyle Busch doesn't want to repeat anything like that today. That'll make you a little gun shy the next time you strap up in one of these babies after you've been on fire rolling down the back straightaway. Let's show you what happened in yesterday's NASCAR Busch race. Kyle Busch makes a move to the outside, runs into a wall of air, and then Tony Stewart bumps into him. And there goes the five. And then a wild slide once he got to the infield grass became a wild ride. One thing I believe, Larry, I wish they would just pave all the grass around a racetrack. I mean, I, I, I know they got to have some, I guess, for the aesthetic value, but man. Unless it's in a flower bed, there doesn't need to be a blade of grass <laughs> at point. a racetrack. Good point. <laughs> you see Jeff Burton, Kenny Wallace, the 78, and David Rudiman, the double zero. Oh, he burped it. Now, playing with that throttle. That's how you keep running over the guy in front of you. As long as the guy behind you doesn't run over you, it works. Jimmy Johnson draws a bead on Marlin looking for the lead, but here comes Kenseth on the outside in the Ford with the move Bobby Levante used to win yesterday. Does he get the lead? Not at the start-finish line. Marlin and, leads this lap. And then look at that high line. Robbie Gordon in the seven car started back in the 38th position. He's trying to form a group there on the high side. The inside line moves again. Marlon the leader, and second is Jimmy Johnson. Let's go to his pit and mat. And Jimmy Johnson, you see him bop out just to get a little bit of fresh air as a number of cars are doing. Warmest day we've had so far here in Talladega. Some cars running a little warm. Johnson around the 230 range this early part of the race. Thanks, Matt. Now, 
that kind of temperature, Larry, in a streetcar, 230 degrees, that'd be big news. But in a race car, not so. As long as it doesn't start losing water. And these, they have pressurized systems. You can run it hot as long as you don't start losing water. But I got to believe this is the hottest day we've had. Remember, we've not had practice since Friday. It was cooler Friday. They may have to pull a little tape off the nose of that car. Well, Greg Biffle and Kurt Busch almost got together going into turn one as and they were three wide. That's what happens. I mean, we've been running here now under green 18 laps and you're getting comfortable. Now you're getting to start to get a little brave, you know, oh, a little bump here, a little bump there. Oh, I like the way that felt. That looked good. Do it again. Pretty soon gets out of hand. We just saw, saw Jeff Burton, the 31 car, the Childress cars. We talked about them earlier. Remember, they started 40th, 41st, and 42nd. Those three guys, Burton, Boyer, and Harvick, they have already moved almost up into the top 10, moving together as a unit. There you see them, 9th, 12th, and 13th. Just like Daytona, qualified terrible, but right up there in the top 10 shortly into the race. New leader in the low Chevy, Jimmy Johnson. The spot is way to the front, passing Jeff Gordon and Marlon on the bottom. Now you watch Jimmy, he'll kind of do what I call working both sides of the street. He'll see which line's moving. He'd like to work with his teammate back there, and that's right. not going to happen. Because here comes Marlon. And Steve, he's got a push from Tony Stewart to go back to the front. He sure does, Mike. And a little while ago, DW said this is not Tony Stewart's favorite car. In fact, Tony's never raced this car. It's been the, in the backup stable at Joe Gibbs Racing. And remember the top of the show, I said Tony doesn't like racing here because he doesn't like relying on other people. Well, he just told his spotter, Mark Robinson, tell the 24 to stay in line. I'll go with him. Guess what? The 24 moved up. <laughs> That's the way it always works. <laughs> Your friends are where you find them. You look behind Tony Stewart here, and you see Greg Biffle in a Roush Fenway Ford. He'll be his friend for a little while. And then I'm also seeing David Reagan in that six car back there in a Roush Fenway. David had a great run in the Daytona 500, the AAA car there, finished fifth. It looks like David Reagan in the six, David Gilliland in the 38. They're committed to staying on the bottom of the racetrack. Let whatever happens up top happen. David Reagan had a great bush race here yesterday, too, with a top five finish. The Richard Childress cars have come from the back to the top ten. I'll tell you a little bit about why that happened when we come back. Four Hendrick engines at the front of the field. Jimmy Johnson, Sterling Marlin, Jeff Gordon, and Jeff Green. Tony Stewart, David Reagan, as we see Paul Menard coast into the garage area. It looked like the engine expired going into turn one, but he was able to coast around back to the garage. Our aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear, helping NASCAR drivers get to the finish line for the past 25 years. Goodyear, get there. Time for our first singular virtual crew chief question of the day. Will Jeff Gordon pass Dale Earnhardt on NASCAR's all-time win list today? To answer, text the word crew to 191 on your AT&T singular wireless phone. Singular is the new AT&T. Now when we went to break, Jeff Gordon and Kevin Harvick in the 29 had fought their way up into the top 10. They and teammate Clint Boyer started dead last, but for the provisional starter, Dale Jarrett. And Harvick said two things. One, there's only one more restrictor plate race with this car before we transition to the car of tomorrow. They didn't put quite as much effort into a qualifying package with only one more race to run. And secondly, they didn't set the cars up for qualifying. They knew they would race well with the package they had, but they also knew they wouldn't qualify well. They were unconcerned about starting in the back, and now we can see why. Well, that 24 just pushed his teammate uh, Jimmy Johnson right out in front of this crowd. Had to get off of him because they were in a turn, but uh, sure put Jimmy out front, right there in front of Jeff Green in the 66. And remember that 66 car, Jeff Green, that's like a Hendrick satellite team. Haas Racing had a great run at Phoenix, Phoenix 6. Here's Jeff Green up there in that 66, battling in the top five. You know, Larry, people have talked about the Chevrolet dominance this year. And one of the things I think they may have done in the offseason over the winter, with the Toyota coming in this year, one of their strengths was the teams working together. I think that the other manufacturers may have realized that, and I think that the Hendrick group 
has probably become like the main supplier for a lot of these cars and teams. And here, Chevrolet has won 15 of the last 16 races. Dale Jarrett's Ford, the only non-Chevy, and he won here in October of 05. Yeah, in the truck series, I mean, that was uh, their strength, the Toyota strength, working everybody together. I think these teams realize that offseason, they pulled their acts together, too. Here's Kevin Harvick in the 29, just ahead of Jeff Burton. You're riding with Burton. Harvick started 41st, Dick Berger, and now he's in the top 10. And so this morning, I asked his crew chief, Todd Barrier, if it was possible to come from 41st to the front. He said, absolutely, smiled at me and said, it's all driver today. This is a brand new car that they have never run before. Car owner Richard Childress told me this morning that the team came to win, not to qualify. So they ran heavier components in the car, which don't help you qualify, but they do provide reliability. And reliability is important when you're going to be running this kind of an automobile race. And speaking of reliability, Dick, or durability, Carl Edwards in the 99 car, we just saw him go to the garage area, puffing out the exhaust. These guys are leaning, tuning on these engines so close, trying to make power that I think we're starting to get some durability. And also remember, this is the first restrictor plate race that we've run the unleaded fuel. Unleaded fuel is not causing these problems, but it's throwing the guys a little bit of a curveball how they tune the engines. Plus, with an impound race, I mean, not a whole lot you can do. After the qualifying yesterday, you got what you got. When are we going to pit? I can imagine that's the question, Larry. Well, we heard Matt Yoakum talk before the race about guys making deals. Most places we go, you want to pit by yourself. You don't want a crowded pit road. But here we talked about dance partners. You have to have a pitting or when you get back out on the racetrack, you can be caught up in a draft to run the speeds these guys are running now. Got to let people know well in advance that you're getting ready to make your pit stop because you can get run over here real easily. And make sure you're on the same strategy, too. That may be why driver eight Dale Earnhardt Jr. and others are hanging out back and away from this swarm at the front of the field right now. Swarm. <laughs> 33 laps complete. At America's fastest speedway in Talladega, Alabama, Jimmy Johnson, Sterling Marlin, Jeff Green out front with Tony Stewart and Matt Kenseth. Carl Edwards went to the garage with an engine problem. They suspect a broken rocker arm. He was eighth in the next Hell Cup points coming into this race. No pit stops, no caution flags, and still a wild ride at the front. For the lead, Jeff Green in the 66. Now we're seeing the middle line move, though, with Tony Stewart there in the 20, Jeff Gordon in the 24, Harvick in the 29. It's starting to move. Yeah, Jeff Gordon has pushed a number of people to the lead, uh, whichever line they are in. Tony wants the 48 there a minute ago. But you got to be impressed with that Haas group, that 66 car out there. You know, they're building a $40 million rolling wind tunnel wow. in Concord. That's how committed this guy is, Gene Haas, is to to the cup racing. They've actually broke ground on They it. broke They're ground, yeah. Field. Now we're getting a report also, Robbie Gordon in the seven car. We don't know why, but he has went behind the wall to the garage area as well. He was up there running in the top 10 not that many laps ago. Well, I think, Darrell, it's part of that synergy between teams. Haas is a big customer of Hendrick Motorsports for cars and engines. I'll bet Hendrick will be a big customer of wind tunnel time. I think so. That rolling wind tunnel, in other words, the ground will move underneath the race car. It's the only one in North America. We do need to add Jeff Gordon to that list of engine problems. We're getting a report that that engine did let go in Robbie Gordon in the seven. Robbie Gordon. Right. Robbie, thanks. Yeah. So Jeff Green, the 2000 champion of the NASCAR Bush Series, has his Chevrolet out front. They're just getting a little gaggled up for me, guys. I'll tell you, I've started to see these cars move around a little bit more. We're drawing near the time for a pit stop. Things are looking tense. Especially, Daryl, as they come right into this area, into the trioval. Yeah, there's a little groove in there. I mentioned that earlier in the show. There's a little groove in there that moves these cars around more than you think. And there's not much banking. 18 degrees in the trioval, 33 in the turns. You're still running the same speed. You know, I was just noticing how much tape Jeff Gordon, the 24 car, Steve Letard, his crew chief, how much tape they had on the nose. I just feel like a lot of these cars are running hot. I think we actually have some Dale Earnhardt audio that may support that. We'll try to come back to that first. 
Matt Yokum on pit road. And teammates try to work together, Mike, in plate racing, but you do what you can. But David Gilliland came on the radio back on lap 11 and said, I can pull away a little bit from some other guys, but I can't use my teammate Ricky Rudd because our cars just don't seem to work well together. Just something arrow-wise, it's a little bit of a hindrance. Hmm. But that's something you want to know now. <laughs> don't find that out with 10 to go. Right. 32 of 188 laps complete. You're watching NASCAR Racing from Talladega, presented on Fox by Domino's Pizza. Coming to complete 41 laps, Tony Stewart, your leader, from Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, and Kurt Busch. Dale Jarrett just made a pit stop, went back out on the track. The engine started missing and then shut off. David Gilliland has been to pit road. Kenny Wallace, and now you see Jeremy Mayfield coming in with Elliott Sadler. These are green flag scheduled stops. And what I think we're going to see on this stop, these, these cars hold 18 gallons of fuel. You want to make sure you get it full of fuel. I think we'll probably see a lot of two tire stops. You may see some guys go for four, but I think for the most part, you're going to see two and probably a lot of guys pulling tape off the front end of these race cars. Pretty bad news for DJ in the uh, 44 car because he's 30. Seventh, uh, 36 in the points. Had a good day today. Might have gotten himself in the top 35. Wouldn't have had to rely on the champion's provisional, which he's out of. You know, what I don't like about David Gilliland and 38 Todd Parrott, what I don't like about their strategy, we've been talking about pitting together with partners to be able to fulfill the draft that you need. David Gilliland pitted by himself, and I think he's going to lose a lot of time by doing that. Scott Riggs is in to make his stop along with Kyle Petty. And Casey Kane in front of Matt. And you've got the 9 in of Casey Kane. A lot of guys going on the right side, tires playing only, making sure Big Tank Provis filling that fuel stuff full of fuel. And Casey does have a teammate that he pitted with, the 10 and also a corporate teammate of the 45 of Kyle Petty. Ward Burton also pitted with them. We're told that Dale Jarrett had ignition problems. That's what sent him to the garage. Some of the leaders in this group, including Denny Hamlin, David Rudum in the double O, and Sterling Marlin in the 14. Ricky Rudd's also in. And Regan Smith in the Army car. This is Tony Rains. Steve. Sterling Marlin said he's very happy with his car, Mike Joy. They're going to get right side tires only on that number 14 Chevrolet. Marlin, a two-time winner here at Talladega. Got to make sure you get that car full of fuel. And the big thing these drivers have to do, make sure no speeding penalty. A speeding penalty, even this early in the race, will take you right out. And I think we're going to have a lot of our lead lap cars on the pit road here in the next lap or two. Yeah, all they've got in there is a hand signal. They've got to let the people around them know they're coming to pit road. Get your hands up and start waving going down the back. Tony Stewart leads a big group onto pit road, and including Kurt Busch and Jeff Burton. 43 car could not get on pit road. Mm -hmm. Oh, Spider-Man is going to have to spider his way back around here. Steve. Tony Stewart on pit road, Mike. Greg Zipidelli just said, what do you need, Smokey? He said, I could stand to be a little bit tighter, but not much. Two tires. Krista. Jeff Burton made his stop. He, another victim of the overheating, running just a little bit hot. They took off some tape. Four tires and fuel for Jeff Burton. You know, Jamie McMurray trying. out, Juan Paulo Montoya in the 42, Reed Sorensen. And something is amiss with Bobby Labonte's car. It's a right front tire flat, Mike. Oh. When he was trying to get on pit road, he locked it up and blew it out. I was going to say, especially if you're going to go with two right side tires, you have to make sure you do not slide those tires getting in. Here's the deal, right side, you're going to ease the track down, leave on me, leave on me. Get that tape off, Tony. Ease the jack down, leave. That's the instruction as Jeff Gordon comes to pit road. And we got a penalty coming first to Krista. The 17 is in. Matt Kenseth saying he's just a little bit tight. They're making an air pressure adjustment on the right side. He's also running a little bit too much gear. Dick Bergen. Much more conversation from Jeff Gordon. Long stop on getting through. Much more conversation from Gordon about temperature. And service is complete for Jimmy Johnson as his teammate Jeff Gordon goes by. A track bar adjustment and Cleaned off the windshield as well. Good stop by the 48 guys just trying to pack that fuel cell full of fuel. Black flag as this group comes to the line on the Home Depot number 20 of Tony Stewart. 
the electronic timing system that measures the speed of each car along pit road caught Stewart, who was the first in that group to come in, too fast entering the pit. He'll have to do a drive through down pit road at pit road speed, 55 miles an hour, while the field is out there running over 190. Yeah, I mean, just look at the lead that he ended up with right there, which, which certainly would dissipate quickly, but now he's got to make that drive through penalty, 55 miles per hour. The thing he's got to hope for now is to be the first car a lap down, get a caution flag, get the free pass back on the lead lap, because he probably will go a lap down. No, what he's got to hope for right now is he doesn't get caught again because uh, coming on pit road by yourself, you got, all you got to rely on is your tack. If it's off 100 RPM, you're busted. Bobby Labonte makes it to pit road where the Petty crew will service his Spider-Man Dodge. The only time you get a pit road speed is on the parade laps and you ride behind the pace car, you get a reading on your tack and that's what you use to make the pit stops with. Craig Zipidelli, Tony's crew chief. Stewart accelerates away and Stewart enters turn one as the lead pack is in turn four. Steve? Yeah, remember, Mike, on his dashboard, there's a little sign that says stay focused. As Tony came down pit road, he said, guys, I just missed you. I wanted to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know his sense of humor is intact. Pit stops pretty much cycle through and our race leader becomes Jeff Burton. Well, later, buddy. Enjoy the view. Here's his view of Kurt Busch right on his bumper. Then Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, Martin Truex Jr. now in the top five. NASCAR on Fox, six different leaders, 15 lead changes, no cautions, and Jeff Gordon just a pass for a second now as Ryan Newman edges past uh, Jimmy Johnson, or that battle is continuing. Jeff Burton slipping back to sixth. Well, right now it's seeing where teammates right now are starting to really work together, and especially Chevrolet's up toward the front. Jeff Gordon in the lead, his teammate Jimmy Johnson right now pushing him down, at, down the back straightaway. And we've had no cautions for debris. Tony Stewart, though, penalized, entering pit road too fast, so currently running 38th. And Jeff, just to case fans are thinking, well, maybe it was NASCAR looking for something with Tony going in. But let's listen to Tony talking to his crew chief. Well, I can't say I didn't know it was coming. I was probably a thousand over when I got there. I just got in way too hard, guys. Sorry. All right, so he knows. He knew it right there coming in. And NASCAR gives all these teams right here a ba basically a five-mile-mile grace period. And Larry McReynolds talked about it in the early part of our show, that you do not want to beat yourself on pit road. And strategy was going to be part of this. Now, it's going to take some strategy to get Tony basically back on the lead lap and get him back toward the front. Mike? Thanks, Jeff. We have 52 laps complete, no cautions yet, and already one round of green flag pit stops. Yeah, and what I'm seeing with Tony Stewart in that 20 car, the, the lead pack, they have gained about five to six seconds on him in the last five laps. Right now, they're running about a second and a half to two seconds faster as a pack. But again, when they catch Tony, he'll be able to blend in with them, and he's going to sit there once again, hoping he gets some type of caution. You know. Here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing things I don't, I'm not accustomed to seeing here. Johnny Sauter running in third place. Ricky Rudd in the Snickers car running in fourth place. You got David Strimmey running seventh. Yaley running eighth. Clint Boyer. We got some names at the front that we don't see up front here a lot. And that Johnny Sauter, the 70, that's Jeff Green's teammate. Remember, we talked about that earlier with Hendrick Engine. So, Darrell, when all those crew chiefs said in the garage area, don't worry, it'll draft well. They weren't kidding. Well, that's almost a sure thing if you'll hold it wide open. See, one of the conferences going on there now after the pit stop, Chad Canals, crew chief for Jimmy Johnson, the 48 in the Lowe's uniform, and then he's talking to Steve LaTarte right now. Matt, they formed their strategy. Now they're talking about maybe even the next pit stop. Larry Mack, you know, from being a crew chief, you work from the finish of the race back, and if everyone does a 44-lap run to the finish, they're going to be eight laps shy of making it. So now you're going to see teams, because of those pace laps which are factored in, now they're going to be going 46 to 48 laps on the next stops. But you're trying to work with your teammates, and that's exactly what you're trying to do here on top of the 48 box. Keep your teammates abreast of what you're doing. Well, I think the why of this is why did Jeff Gordon pit with the 29, Kevin Harvick, because after stops, Gordon's the leader of the race. Johnson's trying to fight his way back up. 
What did Daryl say at the top of the show? You're going to work with who can help you. <laughs> Co-opetition. <laughs> it does not matter who it is right now. No, actually, it doesn't matter all day long, but you'd like to work with your teammates because that's the right thing to do, but if it doesn't help you, you can't do it. But, Mike, now, after making that long green run, they have a much better feel for their fuel mileage. You play it conservative on the first stop, and you don't have the pace laps to deal with like Matt was talking about. There, the field is just about two and a half seconds from catching Tony Stewart. Stewart had to serve a pit road penalty for entering too fast. And you see the view back from Stewart. Here comes the pack, and they'll suck up to him pretty quickly. Some of them will go on by, but as we pointed out, then he'll blend in, and he will be the only car one lap down to the leaders. So he would get the free pass if and when the next caution for the first caution of the day would occur. Yeah, because Bobby Labonte, the 43 car that had that problem getting on the pit road, once he finally made it back and they got the tires changed, he's now three laps down. So as you say, Tony will be the only car a lap down. Let me tell you somebody that uh, just a little while ago we were thinking was in trouble. Dale Jr. in the eight car. He was out of the draft. He was back there with Matt Kenseth. I'm looking back here with Kenseth to see where Dale Jr. is. Guess where he is? <laughs> right in the middle of right in amongst them. He's running 18th, 16th. Now, he did that all by himself. Now, you see, you saw Tony Stewart go backwards from Junior's camera, and the difference between his and leader Jeff Gordon's RPM, about 200. Stewart had no drafting partners, nobody to line up with. Once he, if he can get in that pack, he can run with them. And remember, that RPM, that's a speedometer. The higher their RPM, the more speed you're carrying. Got to watch that yellow line. I see somebody flirting with it down there. I think it's the 96 car. And as you pointed out, Daryl, that's out of bounds. If you gain a position by going below that yellow line, you'll serve the same penalty that Tony Stewart served a drive to. Here's the answer to our singular AT&T wireless question. Well, 30% of you think that Jeff Gordon can win in Talladega today. He started from the pole, the first pole he's ever won at Talladega. <laughs> this is one of those races. People ask you who's going to win. I have no idea. There is no way to tell at this place. It's the only place we come to where there's 43 favorites when the green flag drops. Jeff Gordon, your leader. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. I'm sitting in a hot rod today. Today's race on Fox presented by Domino's Pizza is sponsored by DirecTV. Just say ride shotgun on race day with NASCAR Hot Pass only on DirecTV. By Singular, now the new AT&T. By Ford F-Series, built for bold moves, built for tough. And by Subway Restaurants, Subway, eat fresh. 61 laps, Jeff Gordon continues to lead over Jeff Burton and Jimmy Johnson. Next Saturday, a unique doubleheader on Fox. First, it's Fox Saturday Baseball Game of the Week. Mariners, Yankees in high definition, or Phillies, Giants, or White Sox, Angels. Then we throw a change up and shift gear. It's next L Cup Racing from Richmond International Raceway, where Dale Jr. looks to defend his title again in high definition. A big day of sports on Fox next Saturday, beginning at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I don't know if you can top that doubleheader there. That's about <laughs> as good as it gets. We'll have fun watching, and then we'll have fun at Richmond. 62 straight green flag laps, and Jeff Gordon has led most of them. You know, some of this stuff doesn't even look real. Hey, Burns, you down there? Daryl, I, I swear, I'm like a fan down here. I hold my breath every time they come down uh, Pitt Road. But uh, Kurt Busch just said, guys, this is like, uh, you couldn't get this much side-by-side -side action on a video game. <laughs> and that's exactly, that's just what it looks like. There you go. Sure we can. we got to use Fox 3D to do it. Where's uh, Kurt Busch in all that? There he is, right, right, behind, the the the, right behind his brother. That's what it looks like, though. They come by here all three full wide. And we've got a new leader, Denny Hamlin, going into turn one. He is the second Joe Gibbs Chevy to lead this race, along with Tony Stewart. Mark, what, I, what just fascinates me, though, is this racetrack and how smooth it is. Now, wait a minute, Darrell. Hamlin has not led this race yet. Yes, he was in front in turns one and two. 
but lead changes are only counted at the start finish line. So Hamlin may not be the leader of the race officially. There's no way we can count all the lead changes that happen other places besides the start finish line, but he's fighting back. He may lead it, Mike. He will. Levin Carr led that lap. He must have heard you talking about that. You look down below us in the grandstand and hardly any of those seats are being used. These fans have been on their feet since the drop of the green flag. We've been caution free racing this close together at nearly 200 miles an hour. They're getting a very nice even tan. That's a day that. <laughs> See Elliot Sadler there, that 19 car Dodge. He has his teammate Casey Kane behind him. Those two cars right there, the 9 and the 19, they have not had a top 10 finish, either one of them, since Daytona in the 500. Here you see Tony Stewart in the 20 car. Remember, he is a lap down right now. Would love to see a caution flag to get that free pass. Let's watch this here. The 24 car. Watch the hood on the 31. Holy cow, is that thing packing some air under there or what? You can definitely see it change configuration depending on where it's at behind Jeff Gordon or, or not behind. And, and that, that'll make the engine surge. That uh, buffeting of the hood up and down affects the air pressure under the hood. And these restrictor plates do not. They don't like that. Remember yesterday, Kyle Busch had that grinding side winder crash, and he spent the first part of this race just hanging out at the back of the pack. Dick Bergeron, where is he now? Uh, right now, he's roughly in the fourth, fifth, sixth position. Who knows the way they're shuffling positions here. Right now, he's fourth as he crossed the line, and he is in a very good spot, Mike, because Jimmy Johnson, who is in third position, is a teammate, and also in sixth position, near enough to Kyle Busch to help him, is his brother, and his spotter has been urging Kyle Busch, go with your brother, car number two, that blue car that's right behind him, but the teammates, oh, Gordon's right in front of him as well. So he's in a terrific position. Hasn't said much of anything about the car, but it's a good one. You know, Doc, uh, he's had some, Kyle Busch in the five cars, had some incredibly hard crashes. He had one at Texas, got, a, got some aches and pains. Today, I think he had to get going here. He ran it to back a while, kind of work some of that soreness out and get comfortable before he could drive up to the front like he is now. Now let's transition back to the second pack. A couple of lonely guys running here. Oh, about 16 seconds behind the lead. David Reagan, Joe Nemechek, and Matt Kenseth. Kenseth was a contender early on, Krista. What happened? Well, four is a lonely number, Mike. That's because David Reagan, Matt Kenseth, the two guys on my end who took four tires. Matt Kenseth only wanted to take two, but he flat spotted coming down pit road, and because one of their mics was keyed open, there was a poor communication. The team didn't hear Matt say that he wanted the four, so not only was it a four-tire stop, it was a slow four-tire stop. Very unfamiliar territory for the 17 team. But Krista, here's what they need. We will have more green flag stops if we don't get a caution in about 23 to 28 laps. What they hope is they're going to be forced to go with two. They hope that this big pack up here that went with two last time, they'll go with four, maybe close that gap back up. I don't know. If I'm in the shape he's in, I, don't, I wouldn't take any. These tires are good enough not to change at this point of the race. But remember, Daryl, you've got to have 18 gallons of fuel. Two tires are almost free on the stopwatch. If I'm going to go a lap down, get me in, get me out as quick as possible. Dale Jarrett in the garage with ignition trouble. Jeremy Mayfield 26th and David Rudiman, the top Toyota qualifier and performer of the race so far. Saw his dad, dirt track legend Buzzy, at breakfast this morning. Proud father. Yeah, David had a good car yesterday. Got caught up in a late wreck back there. Jeff Gordon, Denny Hamlin, Kyle and Kurt Busch lead them at Talladega. Today's race on Fox, presented by Domino's Pizza, is sponsored by UPS, official delivery company of NASCAR. UPS delivers the chance to manage your own free fantasy auto racing league. Go to foxsports.com. Our first caution of the race, Tony Stewart would be the one to get the free pass. Yeah, he's gonna get an opportunity to kind of catch up, man, after having that Is that debris through. or is that there's, not debris? There is debris right there All right. on the lower side of, I think, turn one. <laughs> So the 20 car will get a chance to um, 
go 2.66 miles around and get back, close back up. Now, Tony Scott, he had that little gathering with NASCAR officials. Jeff Gordon is your leader, his teammate Jimmy Johnson right behind him and another Chevy, Denny Hamlin. Let's talk about Tony because he led, he moved up 30 spots in the first nine laps of this race. And here I see him work in the field, actually led 11 laps. Meanwhile, engine problems for four other drivers. Some of those, Carl Edwards behind the wall, the Robbie Gordon, Dale Jarrett has won this race before. Four cars out, free engine failure for the moment. And here's where Tony Stewart went the lap down, entering pit road too fast. A drive through, you heard of a drive by, it's a drive through a penalty. Went to 38th and then went a lap down, but now has made that up with this caution. Jeff Hammond, we've had five engine failures, the most of any race this season at California. Already for today is unleaded fuel maybe a cause or a concern causing some of that engine failure. Well, certainly I'm sure everybody's going to say it is. And the guys who tune these engines, they knew they had an issue here today. But there's another part of this equation you got to factor in. It is extremely hot out on that racetrack. And when the cars run hot, it changes the way the mixture is in inside the engine. And that also could be part of this reason. The temperature itself is just so hot. All right, Jeff Gordon has dominated. Let's head back upstairs. Pit road mic is open. Thanks, Chris. The debris was just past the entrance of pit road up in the tri-oval. As you saw, you know, so the pace car will lead them around and everybody should be in. Mike, we were averaging 192 miles an hour. That's well above the record pace here. 188 for a 500 mile race here by Mark Martin. And we were well above that. So this caution probably came at a good time, slowing down a little bit. Well, Chris talked about a good time for Tony Stewart. The 20 gets the free pass, but who this really benefited also was Joe Nemechek, Matt Kenseth, David Reagan. Remember, they were almost a half a lap down, losing a lot of ground, Steve. Larry Mack, Kurt Busch, and the two cars said, guys, everything's cool, except we're running a little bit hot. Left side tires only, and they pull some tape off the grill. Dick? Last time, last time it was right side tires for Jeff Gordon. This time it's left. They wanted to be sure they had every drop of fuel in it. Matt? Four tire change for Jimmy Johnson, who stopped short in his box to have an easy exit. As he stalls the car, Jimmy Johnson installed his race car. Jimmy Latica. Matt, did you see Timmy Lattica take a tumble as they get that car restarted? Another car, Joe Nemechek, had to back up into his pit after he had tried to leave and has to wait until pit road clears to get there. We had 37 cars on pit road at one time. I mean, it's total chaos down there. Boy, when you back up in one of these cars, you got to be careful you don't tear the transmission up. I've seen that happen a number of times. A little corrective surgery on Ricky Rudd's fender. Uh, so they'll stay in for a bit longer stop. Here's our direct TV race off pit road. Watch TV like never before. We're under caution at Talladega. Act and many say it's one of the raciest tracks on the entire circuit. So be with us next Saturday night. That's another impound race, right? It is. Yeah. And the car. A car tomorrow. 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 Yep, there you see the, uh, box. the man that, that his teams, they have won all of the car tomorrow races. Rick Hendrick talking to Jeff Gordon's crew, team, crew chief Steve Latar. And there were some troubles on pit road during this first round of yellow flag stops of the day. Jimmy Johnson after a four tire change. These things have such a high gear in them. If you don't really rev the engine up, it's very easy to stall out. Plus, it's concrete, and uh, it's just hard to get those wheels spinning. you got to get the wheels spinning to get going. And contact between Jamie McMurray and Joe Nemechek. So Nemechek could not get in his pit stall in that blue car center of your screen. He had to back it in to get service. I think that was a very timely caution for Ricky Rudd, the 88 car who'd been running well up in the top 10 or 12. We get in a report that they actually changed the battery out on that race car. Evidently, they were having an alternator or vote problem. There you see Ricky right now still on the lead lap back in 33rd. Yeah, and Larry, I watched uh, Ricky. He was working his way on that outside line to the lead there at one time. And then all of a sudden he started falling back. So that answers that question. Look at that packed infield here at Talladega. From our Goodyear aerial coverage, helping NASCAR drivers get to the finish line for the last 25 years, Goodyear, get there. 
One car pulling up to the inside. That's Bobby Labonte, who is three laps down. Everybody else that is running is on the lead lap for this restart. And to make sure to clarify the rule of the free pass Tony Stewart received at that time, when you get back on the lead lap by virtue of the free pass, you have to start at the tail end of the longest line. So right now, Tony Stewart will be starting all the way basically back in about 38th position. here and it was not too bad then <laughs> <laughs> just kind of get in line ride along and that won't last long as a matter of fact you used to get in line ride along and follow Earnhardt come and think of it lap started in the back but he cannot hold the pack meanwhile Clint Boyer in the 07 has brushed the wall I believe Tony's got some kind of engine problem because he is dropping back in a hurry 07's got quite a bit of right side damage he's gonna have to come to pit road with those tires rubbing oh yeah we're good hey, you just made her a little smaller she'll be faster now I'm not sure about that comment. Uh, like you say, those tires rubbing, he's going to have to probably get the pit road. He actually whacked it a couple pretty good whacks. Yeah. David Stremme in the 40 had to avoid Boyer. He did uh, narrow it up, but he also unlined it. I can tell something must be happening on the racetrack because, once again, no one's sitting down here, and I think it's because of that number eight car, Dale Earnhardt Jr., working his way toward the lead. Tell you that that little run he made earlier to catch this pack all by himself and uh, uh, that impressed me. That told me he's sitting on a pretty good piece. Dale Jr. has won five of the last 11 Cup races at Talladega, including four in a row. And that grandstand is a sea of red, red shirts and hats. As Junior is three cars from the lead, which is pretty hotly contested right here. Now, nowhere near this pack, Tony Stewart all by himself. Steve, what's wrong? Mike, we just listened to Tony Stewart. He said somebody got on the brakes in front of him, and he had to check up or hit the brakes as well, and he just lost momentum. And once you lose that draft, oh, there's car no goes around. Back. I think it's the 07 going around up there in three and four. Boyer has crashed. Yeah. Very possibly cut, cut the tire, a tire down. down. He did. I saw it snap. Caution is out, which is a huge break again for Tony Stewart in that 20 car. Not a good break for Clint Boyer, but for sure, Tony. Now, Kurt Busch and Jeff Gordon were side by side at the moment of caution. But what matters on the scoring chart is where they were at the last of the loop sensors that they crossed just prior to the caution. So Gordon should remain the leader as the pace car picks them up in turn two. But I think Tony's a good example of how easy it is to lose the draft here. you got to be on your game. Won't start either. Did you blow it? This is the first incident with Boyer. Well, up there in the middle. Just gets up a little uh, too high. Wide up top. Four wide way up top. That's a that's a hard lick okay, in that wall at that four speed. Wide there. Just hold your line. Trying to make it around to the pits or trying to ride it out. There it goes. Yeah, you see the right front tire look like may have gone first. We saw the smoke from the tires. I uh, question leaving him out. He's had such a great year, but these restrictor plate racetracks, they have not been good to him. Remember, he finished the Daytona 500 across the start finish line on his roof. 
in a, a bad day here on lap 81 for Clint Boyer. Comes in here ninth in the next Dell Cup points. You know, Mike, just to expand, you talked about the loops. At, the, at a track this size, 2.66 miles, they actually have 19 loops that they're measuring and monitoring with. And I think that's about twice as many as they had initially here. I think there are only about eight or ten. So they've tightened those loops up. Bobby Labonte, who had tire trouble early and fell three laps down, will get one of those laps back. He is the only car on track not on the lead lap. So Clint Boyer will join Dale Jarrett in the garage, Robbie Gordon, Carl Edwards, and Paul Menard. Seeing a little cat and mouse right there. We've been, it's been 10 laps since they were on pit road. You saw Kurt Busch in the two, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight stay out, as well as a, a couple of other cars. Looks like Casey Mears, but Krista, most of them, they want to get in there and get these cars full of fuel. That's right. It's a splash and go for the 31 of Jeff Burton and the 17 of Matt Kenseth. Dick. Corey Glow, very close on pit road. Matt. And service is already complete for Jimmy Johnson. He made a chassis adjustment and just topped him off with fuel. A lot of gas and go on this caution flag. Pretty There's, much everybody. Well, remember, most of those cars changed four tires under that last caution. That's absolutely all they would have done. Now, Kurt Busch, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Casey Mears, Truex, Biffle, and Sorensen elected to stay out there. Get that track position we heard Jeff Gordon talk about. A lot of different agendas. Oh, yeah. Under caution at Talladega, here's today's Texas Instruments DLP amazing moment. September 2003, Elliott Sadler's wild ride. And he walked away. Here's Elliott today wearing the autism helmet, which will be auctioned off after today's race to benefit autism research. April is Autism Awareness, Awareness Month. And I do know our own Jeff Hammond, he put a bid in for $3,000. I think that bid got topped pretty quick, though. But did you notice how Elliot, he's a big guy. He's about, what, 6'4", maybe 6'5", how wadded up he is in there. I mean, it takes a lot to get these big guys down in these cars. Kurt Busch did not pit under this caution flag. Neither did Dale Earnhardt Jr. Casey Mears, Martin Truex, Reed Sorensen, and they will lead the field back to the green flag. We mentioned that Greg Biffle in the 16 car, he had stayed out as well. It's almost like that was a miscue because the next time by, they elected to bring that car to pit road for fuel. That's one of those on further reviews. Yep. <laughs> you see him build speed in the back straightaway. Clint Boyer checked and released from the infield care center. He's okay. In about 10 laps of halfway, Clint Boyer joins Dale Jarrett, Robbie Gordon, Carl Edwards, Paul Menard, five cars out of this race. And I mentioned before that when I mean, we had that first caution there uh, that we were averaging 192 mile an hour. These cautions have slowed us back down now to averaging about 168. So uh, we'll get some long green here, long green flag racing. That average speed will come right back up there again. Dale Jr. second place looking over Kurt Busch. You know, you look at Kurt Busch in that two car. Just think back to the Daytona 500. What a great race car he had. Of course, Tony Stewart gets loose. He gets into the back of him. But when you look at his races here, 12 starts. In the last five races, he has not finished worse than eight. But right now, that eight car, he wants the lead of this 500-mile race coming off turn four. And he's got help, and I think the crowd speaks for itself. Elliott Sadler with him. Don't forget Sadler's car is also red. This is Casey Kane. That's part of that sea of red in the grandstand. And he's picked up Sterling Marlin. Got to cut. Sterling is incredible. He's been at the front of the field ever since they dropped the green flag. He's not falling back very far, maybe fifth or sixth, but he's been right there this whole race. It's 
Sterling just has so much experience with this restrictor plate racing. He's won his share, of course, a couple of Daytona 500s. Always runs well when he has the horse to go with it. Yeah, his, his crew chief, Slugger Labby, you know, he was with Michael when he won the Daytona and uh, won here. So Slugger knows a little bit about this racetrack, too. They're going to leave Sadler in the sucker hole. No drafting partners and stream past him on either side. You ride with him as he backs up to Ryan Newman. And now to Kenny Wallace. You have got to have help. I mean, this group of cars, 28 cars, less than a second separating them on that lap right there. You know, and the thing that people don't realize, I think, is when you're driving one of these race cars, you are questioning every move you make. Did I make the right move? Am I in the right line? Is this the right guy to run with? You know, I mean, you question every move you make because it's so fragile. If you go the wrong way, make the wrong move, pick the wrong car, you go to the rear. In a hurry. Look at Dale Jr. Worked his way to the front. Look what happened. Darrell, it's almost like right now, and I know a lot depends on who's in it, but it's like that middle line is prevailing right now. The one that Kurt Busch is pulling through, but now he goes to the bottom and jumps in front of uh, Casey, Mears. Casey Mears, a 25 car. Short way around, Larry. I'll tell you which line is fast. It's whichever one Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson are in. <laughs> That's what it appears. <laughs> That's a fast line. David Ruderman. David's having a nice go of it so far. Dale Jr. still leading that line on the outside, if not leading the race. But you know, I'm not so sure. I watched Jr. earlier. He falls back. Then he runs his way up through the field. I think that's his strategy. It's setting up there, maybe coming at the end of the day. How long is it going to take me to get to the front? I think he works out a lot through the race. Well, he's dropped now about six car lengths off the lead. Today would have been his father's 56th birthday. They're celebrating Dale Earnhardt Day up at DEI in Mooresville, North Carolina. Here's Matt. Mike Dale Earnhardt would be proud of the work ethic of Will Gray. He was promoted to head engine tutor for DEI at the start of the 2007 season. But back in the summer of 2000, he left California, jumped in his 1960 Chevrolet Bel Air. Heading east, chasing a dream in NASCAR. When he got to the Mississippi River, the generator failed. He had to buy four car batteries so he could make it north, to North Carolina. He got a job at Dale Earnhardt, Inc. One day, walking through the parking lot, the Big E saw this car and said, whose is it? I want to buy it for my own collection. And that's exactly what he did in January of 2001. He made the purchase, and I asked Will, what was the original color? He says, I don't know. It was just a faded out brown. But this car rests in the Big E's car collection back in Mooresville. That is a neat story. Such a neat story. My favorite Dale Earnhardt collectible is a John Deere tractor that you have to, it's a one lunger. And you yeah. got a, a, it's old John, and you got a crank, got that big old wheel on the With side. With a flywheel. Of, and Dale was always so proud. I, he'd say, grab hold that wheel. <laughs> well, I couldn't even get it to him. I couldn't budge it. And he'd walk up that thing. He was strong as an ox and spin that thing around and start that old yeah. tractor up. My he dad, would never ask you to do anything, but he would tell you oh, yeah, a heartbeat. Yeah. No, grab hold that wheel. <laughs> My dad had one of those, a John Deere Model H, two-cylinder. I could never spin that oh, no. wheel over. No, but it's cool <laughs> when it fires. Today's race on Fox is presented by Domino's Double Zero Deal, the official pizza of NASCAR. Halfway at Talladega, only two caution flags today, no big incidents, and Casey Kane has become the 12th different leader of this race. Tony Stewart, pit road speeding penalty, he acknowledged coming in too fast, he's now back on the lead lap. There are only five cars in the garage, 25 lead changes so far. And Casey Kane out front. Right now, Kurt Busch, the two car, another Dodge, seems content to ride there, right on the rear bumper of Casey Kane in that nine car. It's kind of interesting that the two Dodges are working really well together. You got the two teammates, Johnson and uh, Gordon, in a 48 24, but man, that nine and 19 are working really good together. And their teammate, though, I mean, the nine and the two, the 48 and the 24, their teammate Casey Mears, the 25 behind those two Dodges. Thirty-seven cars on the lead lap. 
one long freight train led by engine engine number nine. Ah, get the door. It's Domino's. Congratulating Jeff Gordon, our Domino's hot lap winner. 72% of you correctly predicted that he would be the first of the five fastest qualifiers across the line on the halfway lap. All of you who entered are automatically entered to win the ultimate fan experience at the Michigan race this August from Domino's. Gordon was third overall at the halfway lap behind Jimmy Johnson and Casey Kane. Kurt Busch. Steve, is he playing good soldier right there behind Casey Kane? Mike, you know, the only problem that Kurt Busch has had today, he was among the cars that was, or in one of the cars that was running too hot. They pulled some tape off, and since then, the car's been fine. His spotter, Jesse Walker, has said several times, good solid work, Kurt Busch, good solid work. On the flip side of the coin, his brother, Kyle Busch in the five car, he is now starting to run hot, and what he's done to try to get some air to that thing, still with 91 laps to go, he's dropped to the rear. There you see him back there, the yellow car, running warm right now. Now, at, at this point in the race is when, when mental fatigue, we're not there yet, but this is when you start getting your head hurting and your vision a little blurred, and you really got to focus right now because of how close together we run. Mike, we talked about Casey Mears in the 25 car behind those Dodgers a while ago. He has now found his two teammates behind him, Jimmy Johnson in the 48, Jeff Gordon in the 24, 25, Krista looking pretty sporty. Looking very good indeed, Larry Mack. You know, his day didn't start out so well. Casey Mears had trouble on his first pit stop because he was looking for his pit stall from yesterday's Bush race. He finished third in that race and ran very well up top. That is the line that is working for him today. Casey Mears stayed out on lap 82 when all the cars came in for that fuel-only stop. And remember, that is the car, the team, different driver, different crew chief that won the race here in the fall. And his crew chief, Darian Grubb, he knows how to win Daytona, and he knows how to probably win Talladega. He was the crew chief that stood in for Chad Knauss last year when Chad was on that four-race suspension, won the Daytona 500. Darrell's going to have lunch with him one day. <laughs> He's my buddy. <laughs> it's the first time that Casey Mears has led a Nextel Cup race in 2007. With Johnson and Gordon behind him, then Denny Hamlin, and then Ryan Newman in that yellow Kodak car coming up to fifth place. Inside lane, about four cars back. Martin Truex, the former Bush champion, Matt currently in 11th. Mike back on the first stop on lap 44. There was some miscommunication. Martin thought that the team wanted him to be on pit road when they were coming around to lap 44. Bono Mannion wanted him on pit road after he took 44 on the track. The spotter thought he was pushed down, but then they said, all right, no problem. But then on the last stop, they called for a four-tire change when he was already on pit road. He said, hey, just let me know earlier. That way I can be on the gas as close to that line at the beginning of it. Starts. But Matt, tell Bono, Larry Mack said, don't give a driver a lap number. Just tell him pit in two laps. Pit in one lap or pick next lap. Don't give him lap numbers. Overload. Doesn't mean a thing to him. Overload, overload. TMI. <laughs> Too much information. You got it. A driver wants to know only one number, only two numbers. How many laps to go? How much money's on the check? <laughs> See Johnny Salter there in the 70 car in the yellow transportation. Haas car made an evasive move. And you can see Scott Riggs in the 10. I don't think he liked that move. That's what causes the big one. Yeah. A sudden move that no one's expecting. Exactly. I tell you, a guy that Larry, pretty impressive. Almost, I mean, at the, at, on, the, on the verge of going a lap down is a cat in that DeWalt number 17 car there, Matt Kenseth. Got that uh, caution when he needed it, and here he is working back up in the front of the field. Krista, what's uh, Matt saying? Well, surprisingly pretty happy considering what they've gone through today. On that fuel-only stop back on lap 82, they took the fuel-only, but Matt realized they had too much tape on the grill. They had to bring it back in a lap later. The team was adjusting it, and Robbie Reiser yelled down from the pit box, guys, it needs to be a two-by-six opening. They had to adjust it even more, got Matt back out there, and he's been running very well ever since. And again, we want to answer the why question. Why do these guys run tape on the nose if you're flirting with running hot? The more tape you can run on the nose, it helps to reduce the drag of the car. It'll faster down the straightaway and this whole racetrack is essentially straightaways. 
Tell you another guy that's working some magic. That 20 car. I mean, he got the lucky uh, dog there a little bit ago, free pass. And uh, here he is back riding, up in the top 10. You're riding with Tony Stewart. There he is in front of Jeff Burton. Pulling up on David Rudiman. In the double O Camry. Ooh, Kenseth ducked out of line. He had a run on Jimmy Johnson, had to go and did. He's going to take Jeff Green and Jeff Gordon with him. I tell you, that old Ford's running pretty good right now, buddy. Did he get a jump or did Jimmy Johnson bobble somehow? Well, when he jerked out from behind him, it upset Jimmy's car and uh, that just enough to slow him down and shoot by him. You know, Denny Hamlin there in the 11 car starting to form a little line up there on the high side. And we've been talking about Kurt Busch, but how about his teammate Ryan Newman in that 12 car? He's been running up near the front of the pack most of the race. Matt Kenseth was 30th 12 laps ago. Now he's the leader. That's how fast things change at Talladega. Love Talladega. NASCAR on Fox from Talladega. 30 lead changes so far. 106 laps in. And our Napa Auto Summary with uh, Jeff Gordon leading Casey Mears and Jimmy Johnson. Those are three Rick Hendrick cars right up front. Denny Hamlin and Tony Stewart. And as you can see, we've had 13 different leaders. Only two cautions. First caution was for debris. We haven't had the big one, not the big wreck, but this was as close as we came. Clint Boyer came in top 10 in points, scrapes the wall. They decide not to pit. Look at the back of the pack here where he kind of loses it. Having some tire problems, Rex. He was okay. The car was not one of five drivers out of the race. Dale Earnhardt Jr., lap 86, takes the lead for the first time today. More than 160,000 fans, most of those, Jeff Hammond, standing, wearing red. You stepped outside of the Hollywood Hotel to I observe. I stepped outside. I could not believe the roar of that crowd. It almost drowned out these race cars. And you see, we got a pretty good battle up front once again. Matt Kenseth is racing up there toward the front. And, and Jeff moments Gordon ago, Tank took the lead away from him. Jeff Gordon recapturing the lead. 40 plus laps led for him in this race so far. And again, with Casey Mears and Jimmy Johnson, there are still pit stops coming for guys like Dale Earnhardt Jr., Kurt Busch, and Casey Mears. Yeah, they didn't uh, pit on that last caution. They decided to stay out. So these cars right now have to make an unscheduled stop or at least an early stop in, in, in light of the rest of the, uh, the field. Currently, Kurt Busch running 11th. Dale Earnhardt Jr. on what would have been his father's 56th birthday, running 12th with 80 laps to go here in Talladega. Glad to have you along. We'll continue with NASCAR on Fox in just a moment. Today's race on Fox presented by Domino's Pizza is sponsored by Toyota. Moving forward by Lowe's, proud home of Jimmy Johnson and Team 48. By Napa Auto Parts, Napa, get the good stuff. And by Nextel, only from Sprint, helping NASCAR Nextel Cup fans get more done. 76 laps to go in the Aaron's 499 at Talladega. Jeff Gordon has been in command of this race for 46 of its 112 laps. Nobody else has led more than 16 laps, and that was Sterling Marlin. Dale Jr. off the pace below the yellow line, drifting to the hot, back hot, of the... Hot. 255. And he's running hot again. You heard him tell his crew chief, Tony Uri Jr., 255. Now, you heard Jeff Hammond talk about the cars. Is that okay, or you want to get out when it's that hot? I wouldn't worry about it. I think everybody's in the same situation. If it gets to 260, then it gets to 260, but... I mean, uh, there ain't a whole hell of a lot more tape I can take off. Okay, I, ain't nobody said what was good, what was bad, so I was going on my own judgment. In forward, just let it eat. All right, now, my way to eat. But you heard Jeff Hammond talk about the cars that did not pit on the last caution. Dale Earnhardt Jr. will be one of those cars. He'll have to be on pit road within the next six to eight laps. And you'd say, well, why don't they do something about it if it's running hot? It slows it down. Exactly. And you do not want to give up that speed. But you also know, Daryl, and I know technology's changed, but it gets so hot, it maybe doesn't hurt the engine, but it can actually take away from the power with this restrictor plate. Oh, yeah. Now, when he dropped down below the yellow line, piece of rubber or something there. That yeah, was it's off just the side uh, of the racetrack. A little rubber debris. Yeah, it's Marbles debris the at the tires. bottom of the racetrack. Yeah. So Junior is back up to speed and trailing the pack now instead of up with the leader. Nine laps. Nine laps. There you had Tony Uri Jr. tell Dale Earnhardt Jr. nine laps. We need to clear one thing out. Daryl made the point about the yellow line out of bounds. It's only out of bounds if you gain a position, and he did not. He lost a ton of position.
I just, it's amazing. Look how comfortable he is driving. And that's, I mean, he looks like he'd be driving down the interstate. And that's how good this track is, and that's how smooth it is. As long as everybody minds their manners, you're going to have an incredibly great race. Bobby Labonte's car yesterday in the Bush race was overheating in the last couple of laps. He still had enough steam to get around Tony Stewart and win it. He did have a lot of steam. I saw it coming out of it. All these engines now with the sealed system that they have, they're pretty incredible about how hot they can run. That's why they run all that tape. You know, Mike and Darrell, we're talking about those three Hendrick cars up there, Gordon, Casey Mears, and Jimmy Johnson. But how about the car right behind them? Joe Nemechek in that 13 car. He lost the draft. He had problems on pit road. He has fought and clawed his way back to the top five with that Hendrick engine under the hood of that race car. Joe Nemechek, the 13. Larry. The thing I th thought was funny a minute ago, who watched Joe Nemechek, who's had a fantastic run here today, and, and I was listening to you guys' conversation, but how about Dale Earnhardt Jr.? When he saw he was hot, it's like almost like it scared him tremendously because he was like, hot, 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 and he automatically jumped to the inside. And Daryl and Larry, you know this to be true. You've got to remind those drivers from time to time to check those gauges so they don't get surprised, especially as hot as it is today. And, and, of course, you know, one thing, no matter what, sure, Dale Earnhardt Jr. wants to win this race here on Dale Earnhardt Day, but he wants to finish as much as anything. But you're right, uh, Jeff. I can't tell you how many times y'all have called me and said, what's your gauges? And I'd say, leave me alone. They're okay. And all of a sudden, you'd ask me what my gauge. And I'd look down and say, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Now I know why you were asking. Woo, there's some little movement that was yep. almost trouble in the 12 with the 12 car there, Ryan Newman. Newman right in the middle of yeah, four. He got, he got wiggly. He got wiggly going down the backer. I think he may have got a little tap. Problem, Steve? Well, indirectly, Mike Joy, what Kurt Busch is telling his spotter, Jesse Walker, tell the 12 to stay in the middle lane. Don't run the bottom. And what happened was the 12 and the two, their teammates, they got separated. So indirectly, there was trouble. And Steve, another set of teammates had just got separated. Matt Kenseth in the 17, his teammate David Reagan in the six. David Reagan now caught in the middle, and he is sliding back about as fast as if he was in reverse. He's getting the rookie squeeze. Larry, those rookies and those yellow bumpers, the veterans have them up toward the front. They've got a way of working those rookie drivers out of the pack, which made Reagan's fifth place finish in the Daytona 500 all that more inspiring. It's like a pack of hungry lions all roaring and fighting and going at each other. Time for our next AT&T Singular Virtual Crew Chief question. It's about coopetition. Can a driver win today without a teammate on his tail? Yes or no? To answer, text the word crew to 191 on your AT&T Singular wireless phone. Singular is the new AT&T. I think you're going to have to define teammate. <laughs> well, let's say a driver who is a team member of yours, because like Daryl pointed out, you have occasional friends that will help you from time to time. But look, the Hendrick cars are running right together. Do you need a teammate to win? That's the question. Absolutely. I think I would refer back to Martinsville, two teammates racing each other pretty darn hard, and that <laughs> same thing would probably happen here today. Steve Burns, looks like we're working on another new leader here, David Streamy in the 40 car. Remember, he had to go to the rear of the field to start this race for unapproved adjustments. He sure did, Larry Mack. And this time a year ago, David Streamy was 36th in points. Now he's 18th. His crew chief, Stephen Lane, told me this morning he finally belong, feels like he belongs in this series. He said what we have to do now is know when to pick him up off the floor and when to calm him down. He said David Stremme wants to know, he needs to know that everyone on the team is behind him. Yeah, Steve, he got a large injection of confidence at the end of last year, and it's still uh, he's still got it going on this year. He's about to fall victim to the Hendrick Hustle as Gordon, Johnson, and Mears gang up in the outside lane. He's got a little help from Ryan Newman in the 12, but not enough to hold the lead. Newman's car is dicey. It jumps around quite a lot. I noticed that here lately. <laughs> 119 laps into this race. On that lap right there, the top 28 cars all changed positions that time. Sixty-nine laps to go at America's Fastest Speedway. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Welcome back to Talladega with four-time Talladega winner Darrell Waltrip and crew chief Larry McReynolds. I'm Mike Joy. This race has a big green flag look to it, and now green flag pit stops. Dale Earnhardt Jr. 
comes to pit road along with Kenny Wallace. Four tires, right, Tony Jr. Doing two left. He slide one. Oh, no, no, I was just trying to give an idea what was going on. Five away. Right here, two left. Stay away from the wall, please. Dick. Well, Junior last pitted on lap 74, and they all day long in this race have been concerned about temperature. One of the crew members now wiping the grill. They don't feel they can take any more tape away, getting every last drop of fuel into the car. And we've seen that time after time. Tires on, and they wait until they get every bit of fuel in it. And this will make it, if we can cycle through these green flag stops, it'll make it where it's a one-stop race. Trouble, Casey Mears. And you know what? I'm not so sure this isn't a product. He, I think he was trying to get the pit road because he was one of the cars that needed the pit. Punted by Jimmy coming in. And it sounds like Poor he man, fired up, may fired have up. gotten turned by yeah, his teammate. But I definitely think Casey Mears was trying to get to pit road in this 25 car. That's what the spotter indicated, Larry. Yeah. Let's see. He's and right uh, here. He is right, right in the up. front of the pack. But you know, Larry. Yeah. I mean, he's he's up a little high. Uh, man, that's a hard, a hard lick. Hit. But he was up a little bit too high there, trying to get. You know, he should have been a little lower, maybe. I don't know. Let's watch from Jimmy Johnson's on board. See right here, he moves, coming through the corner, coming through the corner. He moves out a little bit. My question would be. Did he give a good solid hand signal, especially going down the back straight, straight away to let those guys know, hey, I'm going to pit road. Hey, that's a Hendrick car. He got that run over by his Hendrick. Unbelievable, man. They just took us out of the freaking point. Yes. Unreal. Mears came in here 36th in points, and he was poised to gain nine spots in the next Hell Cup standings, which meant he would be exempt from having to qualify his way into the field next week at Richmond. I can't imagine why that their teammates, they wouldn't know each other when, when you're coming to pit road. Need to update Dale Earnhardt Jr. Because of the size of this racetrack, he was able to make that green flag stop. And I think it was a great call. He went with two tires because he stayed on the lead lap. When this is all over with and these cycle of pit stops, he'll be leading this race. Boy, there's good news. Casey Mears walked away. Yeah, because that thing went hard into that inside retaining wall. And under caution, most all of the lead lap cars come to pit road. Here's your leader, Jeff Gordon, in. Let's go up to Kristen. The 17 and 31 pitting right next to each other. So it's going to be a two tire stop for Matt Kenseth. And it looks like four tires for Jeff Burton. Dick. Jeff Gordon taking two right side tires. It's been two tires on every stop. Matt. It was an easy entry for Jimmy Johnson, so that way he wouldn't flat spot his left side tires. Small track bar change, the car still on the tight side. Kurt Busch just leaving pit lane. Uh, he was headed to pit road when the caution came out. They were going to take two, but they decided, since they'd already committed, let's just take our time, do four. We'll have to make our way from the back. They also cleaned off the grill, and Kurt Busch wanted some water. And Steve, someone may have a penalty because of a tire rolling across pit road. What NASCAR will determine, did it get knocked out there or did it roll out there? Notice that uh, no one's running out there to get it. <laughs> not claiming it, huh? That's not my tire. <laughs> nice pickup for Tony Stewart, six spots. NASCAR requires each team to letter their car number on each wheel. They'll find out where it came from. Pretty baseball and then Fox Saturday night racing under the lights at Richmond with these Nextel Cup drivers. Can't wait to get there. And Mike, you know, we try to give every, we try to give you a heads up. You folks at home, we try to give you a heads up on what the drivers have got to do and what they're expected to do. We were watching the 25 replay, the end car from Jimmy Johnson. We saw no indication that Casey Mears ever gave a hand signal that he was expected that he was coming to pit road. But Daryl, there's a reason for that, and Chris Devota is in Casey's pit. Well, guys, actually, the 25, they were planning on coming in there. They were planning on pitting, and the impression they had was that it was going to be a Hendrick Express coming to pit road, that the 24 and 48 were also going to come in. So somewhere, definitely some miscommunication, but that was what was going on in the 25. Matt? Talking to Chad Knaus, Jimmy Johnson's crew chief, he said they had not planned on pitting at that juncture, and Jimmy did not see any hand signals from his teammate. So it was a miscommunication definitely somewhere, and this is the worst situation, obviously, for a multi-car team. You don't want to have an incident with your teammate. And obviously the driver of the 48 feels bad, but unfortunately now it just is what it is. 
And, and sometimes it's a false security when you have teammates around you. You think they're going to take care of you. You think they're going to watch out for you, but they got to have the information you have. One good news is there is safer barrier on the inside of that wall down there. I think that made a huge, huge difference. All right, let's listen to some audio we picked up from Jimmy Johnson's team. I don't know. He was coming into pits, Jimmy. Damn, I didn't see him wave a thing off. I am so sorry. I dumped those guys. And you know what? They never told me they were pitting. Sorry, I, I couldn't have told you. I really, really believe that. Because, oh, I do too. again, we didn't see it. Now, we need to update. Kenny Wallace in the 78 car is leading the race. Remember, he was one of those cars that pitted with Dale Earnhardt Jr. on 124. I mentioned we felt like Dale Earnhardt Jr. would be leading this race. Tony Urie Jr. elected to bring him back to pit road under caution and get those two right side tires to go with the left they changed under green. And you see National Day of Prayer on Kenny's car there. That's this coming Thursday. Uh, President Ronald Reagan declared the first Thursday of every May National day of prayer. I'll be uh, attending the one in Nashville this Thursday morning. Take this restart from our DLP ultimate picture cam. 60 laps to go in Talladega. Daryl, I believe Kenny Wallace got too good of a start. I think he's a sitting duck with that 24 car in that group back there. He did duck in front of Bobby Labonte that's three laps down, but he got a heck of a start that may not be good because they'll, they'll gang up on him now. Probably will, but I tell you, that's not a bad race car today. He's got that power, Hendrick power on the hood, and he's taking advantage of it. Do need to make mention Clint Boyer, 41 laps down, the 07 car hit the wall earlier. They repaired that car. He's back out on the racetrack. They've caught Kenny Wallace, and without a drafting partner, he will lose the lead. But this is still a great day for Kenny Wallace, just got like that right. Mentioned. Two cars I've been really impressed with all day has been Kenny and, uh, and Sterling Marlin that has been able to run up front most of the day. The irony, we've had several ironies today, and the irony of that last crash was that the last time these cars were at Talladega, it was the 25 that took out the 48 <laughs> for the win. I didn't at that about time, that. the driver was Brian Vickers. The other irony is that Tony Stewart, who's now steaming up the outside. Oh, Trouble. Ricky Rudd in the wall. Trouble Nemechek back there. around. Kyle Busch. You know what? I'm not so sure that that wasn't started. Oh, is that Dale? Jeff, no, Jeff, Jeff Burton, Burton. 31 car. Kyle Busch, another wreck today, just like yesterday. And a very hard hit. That hard is. Crash. He's old. There's a window net coming down. Oh, it's good to be 21, Daryl. Nemechek's car crashed. Kyle's going to drive it back. He's going to try it. I don't think it's going to go anywhere but in a circle. And if he's not careful, it's going to cook that engine because you know the radiator. You can see the water running out from under it. I tell you, we got to take a look at this. Good, but I believe the 48 car was involved in this little scrimmage. Somebody tipped Ricky Rudd into the wall. Let's see who. I think this watch just down the back. Rudd is behind Tony Stewart on the outside. Yeah, they're right. They're right here. Here's the 48 car right here. But the 96, Tony Raines, looks like he got up into Jimmy Johnson, the 48, initially off turn two, I believe, Daryl. I believe you're right, Larry. I, I, I saw the 48 move. Gosh, that's a hard lick by those two cars. Good but thing the safer, safer barrier, barrier is there again. Let's look from the rear bumper of Kevin Harvick's Penzoil Chevy. Oh, man, look at Nemechek's car go airborne. And then uh, Kyle Busch's car goes airborne when it hits the, the rear wheels come off the ground. They're riding with Jeff Burton. Oh, man. Oh. Oh. I, oh, gosh. That was when the five car came I, 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 Listen, y'all, I know you, you, you don't know what that feels like. Unless you've been in one of these crashes, you can't imagine how that hurts. The good news, Daryl, everybody is either driving back like Jeff Burton or has climbed from their cars okay. Mike, it's just like, it's like Muhammad Ali would walk up to you and just hit you as hard as he could right in the gut. All right, Matt, how about Jimmy Johnson's car? He was right in the midst of the start of that. Jimmy says the steering wheel is straight, so that's good news that the toe is not knocked out. But he says he's got a tire rub predominantly in the right rear area. That's what they're going to try to work on on this stop, Mike. Let's show you the aerial view and see if the 96 of Tony Raines 
which is way on the left of your screen here, tips into Jimmy Johnson to trigger this. Oh, it sure looks like it. Uh, yeah. There was, I don't know if there was contact between the 96 and the 48, but there definitely was movement enough to push him over into Ricky Rudd in the 88. And just a chain reaction behind him with all these other cars. Look at those two cars, the 31 and the 5 come together, collide. That's definitely what happened, Larry. The 96 scooted up the hill just enough to get into the left front of Jimmy Johnson. And there was Ricky Rudd forced him into the wall. Now watch the 13 come across. Bam. He got turned around by his teammate Sterling Marlin trying to slow down. Look at that five car. It was flying backwards. There is contact, uh, we're told. It's all it takes is just there that little is. nudge. You can run this close together all day long until somebody does something like that, and then you're gonna, it's going to affect a lot of guys. Boy, those two cars scrubbed off no speed no, whatsoever on the way I, to the inside there, wall. There have been a lot of racetracks where the safer barrier has not been installed, or at least in the past, on the inside walls. Man, thank God for there and again off of turn four earlier. And a good thing, the asphalt there. That kept those cars at least on the ground. All right, let's join Krista with Casey Mears. A lot of contact between teammates today. The victim of that first incident, the 25 of Casey Mears. Casey, we were in your pit. We heard your communication. What were your thoughts? What was supposed to happen on that pit stop? I don't know. I thought we were all in pretty good communication that we were all going to come in that time. That's what I was told anyway, that we were all going to come in that lap. And, and uh, I was waving off down the back stretch, and I thought it was very clear that, that I was coming in. But, um, I mean, I know Jimmy wouldn't mean to do something like that. I mean, we're best friends, you know, but... Uh, the bad part about it is we were 35th going into this race, and now it looks like we're probably going to have to be qualifying in the show like the rest of these guys going into Richmond. And uh, I just can't believe it went down like that, you know. Uh, it's too bad for the National Guard, too, and GMAC. We had, we had such a good race car. I mean, we are just riding. Just uh, a lot of really good teamwork, actually, leading up to that point. And uh, I just feel better for, bad for everybody at Hendrick Motorsports. There's a lot of guys that put a lot of time and effort in this car, and, and uh, we had a real good race car today. We just... Uh, I don't even know why we're here. I really don't have much, much else to say. A very frustrated Casey Mears. He was running top five, contending for the win. His day is done. I just think it's a, in, incredible. He's got a torn up car. He could have been hurt. What's he worried about? Points. Points in the top 35. Well, Crystal, let him know that he is still in the top 35 and has to watch out for Scott Riggs, who I don't believe can gain enough to knock Mears out of the top 35. Now, here's what we call the danger zone with accompanying music, because if you're in the top 35 going to the next race, you are automatically in the race and qualifying just for grid and pit position. From 36 on down, you have to time trial to try to get in the race, and there are always more cars than there are available positions. This week, nine of them went home. The only one I think that Casey Mears has to worry about right now is maybe Scott Riggs in that 10 car, should he have a good solid day. You're watching NASCAR on Fox, presented by Domino's Pizza. A five-car accident has brought out the fourth caution flag of the day. And as we get ready for one lap to go, we have takers on pit road. Steve? Tony Stewart's going to top off by gas only for Tony Stewart. He stalled it just a little bit. Let's go to Dick. Gordon is going to take four tires and all the fuel that race car will hold. They talked a long time about this, and here he is on pit road. This will be the last stop. So Jeff Gordon gives up the lead to get four fresh tires, and they're trying to push start Tony Stewart. Yeah, he can't get it fired. I think it is now, though. He saw the black smoke rolling out of it. Steve? Yeah, listening to Tony Stewart in the cockpit, Mike, he said that the, he felt like the battery was dead. May have a battery issue on that 20. Well, that would not be the first one that we've had today. Remember, Ricky Rudd, the 88 car, had a problem earlier. The only cars that did not stop on that lap, Elliot Sadler, David Reagan, and Jamie McMurray, but Reagan and McMurray were in the lap before. Now, unlike a lot of racetracks where we run a lot of blowers, bead blowers, brake blowers, and every other kind, here about the only thing, boy, you see Zippy, he is upset. Goodness gracious, he's had a trying day. 
He's had a he's had a trying year. Mechanical parts have fought them a lot. A lot of cars out of this race from this crash. Here's Krista. We continue to camp out at the care center. Joe Nemechek taking a look at our monitor to see what happened there. And Joe, you also have had a trying day. You uh, started in the back. You worked your way up. How'd your day end? Well, it's pretty disappointing right now. Uh, you know, I just feel bad for the whole team and certainty. Uh, just tough. You know, we started in the back. Uh, just rode about mid-pack most of the day. Came in, made some adjustments on it, and we went. Uh, actually, I couldn't get on pit road. There was cars merging off of pit road. I didn't want to get wrecked trying to get on pit road, so we fell behind, caught back up, made it up to about fourth spot, got shuffled back, could keep getting back to the front, so my car was strong. All right. Joe is okay, and so is Kyle Bush, who was also released from the care center, but declined to be interviewed. Getting set to go green, there'll be 52 laps to go. Jeff Burton is out of the race from that crash. Kyle Bush, Joe Nemechek. The other cars under repair and have returned to the racetrack. Yeah, there are 32 cars on the lead lap, certainly bring it up to lead, uh, the end of that line, but boy, we don't have any takers on the inside line, Larry. No, I mean, they're all in the outside line. Because Bobby Labonte, the first car, not only lap two laps down. I know our fuel window at the start of the race was 46 to 48 laps. We get this restart with basically about 51 or 52 laps to go. I think they're getting better mileage now that we're on into this race. They can go further than the 46 to 48 laps. But Larry, if we go caution free the rest of the way, can they make it? I would be willing to bet that almost everyone that was on pit road right there will be able to make it because the draft helps fuel mileage. You, you don't really get you don't get better mileage. You just get figure it closer once you've had a few green flag stops. Now, Elliot Sadler, the 19 car that brought the field down for this restart, he got drop kicked to the inside. He's going to be lucky if he can hang in the top 10 or 12 here after they complete one lap. Can you say rookie? We've got a rookie leading the race. David Reagan, top five at Daytona. Tough sledding since. And his Roush Ford is out in front. Had a great run yesterday in the Bush race. I, what did he finish? Third, I think. Fourth. Fourth yesterday. Thank you very much. And uh, here he is leading this race. Reagan is the 19th different driver to lead this race today. Well, you know, we've only had a few little thunderstorms. <laughs> I sure hope we're not building up for something bigger. 60-40. Can you win without help from your teammate? They say on our... AT&T singular virtual crew chief poll. David Reagan just had a teammate jump to the outside. Matt Kenseth in that 17 car, and he's bringing a bunch of friends with him to the outside, including Kurt Busch in the two and David Streamy in the 40. You know why, Larry? When you look up in front of you and you see a yellow bumper, you go the opposite direction. <laughs> there you go. Which every rookie has a yellow stripe on the rear bumper just to indicate to the other drivers, hey, this is a rookie. He may have not even raced here before. It's his no-no square. <laughs> Kurt Busch puts his Dodge out front and the yellow car, the Kodak car of Ryan Newman, his teammate scrambles to catch up with his teammate. One of the best restrictor plate races in recent years, Michael Waltrip, failed to make this race but he's been on the radio with his rookie driver David Rudiman and listen to what Michael told Rudiman about three minutes or three laps before this last big wreck. David I know you and Sean know this but now's the time when everybody's going to crash you know everyone is just they're they're thinking time's running out so it's going to get worse and worse so you guys just be on your toes. Ten more. Sean is David's cousin. He's been his spotter ever since he came into the truck series four years ago and now I'm with him here in the uh, in the cup series as well. Michael was the last car bumped from the field. He missed the race by nine one thousandths of a second. See Juan Pablo Montoya a little bump draft on the J.J. Yaley in the 18 car who gives a little bump to Ryan Newman in the 12 car. But once again a car flexing their muscles that 66 car up there Jeff Green but not a lot of help on the high side right now. That four way bump draft looked like hip bone connected to the knee bone thigh bone connected to the knee bone. Still on the bottom of three. Let's go back down to the care center Chris Devota. Actually, Mike, we've moved from the care center, walking through the garage, have caught up with Jeff Burton, who's watching his crew work on the singular wireless Chevrolet. And Jeff, obviously very frustrated. You had a great car. Talk about your day. 
Well, we, we, you know, we weren't the fastest car here by any means, but we, uh, we got, you know, got ourselves in the middle and just kind of hung there. And, um, you know, I thought we did a nice job today. We just got caught up in somebody else's stuff. It always works out that whoever starts a wreck never gets in it here. And um, about halfway, you could feel it pick up. The intensity level started picking up, and I, uh, I figured it was going to happen, and sure enough, it did. Well, it's funny that Jeff mentions the intensity level because earlier in the race, we talked about he calms down when the race starts, but when the laps wind down, the intensity picks up, and that's exactly what he just said now. Yeah, Krista, we're at uh, getting close to frantic pace now. Now look at the outside lane. At the tail end of the lead pack is Big Orange, Tony Stewart. He's only one second behind the lead, Steve, but that's 23rd position. Yeah, Mike, and I want to follow up after that pit stop. You saw how frustrated Greg Zipadelli was. I talked to the car chief, Jason Shapiro. Jason said we did lose a battery. We've switched over to battery two. He said that should give us enough to make it to the end. Yeah, most of these teams are carrying a backup battery, and there's a switch that the driver can throw that goes to that backup battery. A big point, though, you made it, Daryl. You don't really have a lot of blowers and things here. No, it doesn't drain the battery down. And looking at his telemetry, 7,500, she's running just fine. Thank you. Yeah. David Stremme loses the lead to Denny Hamlin, who brings Jamie McMurray with him. 46 laps to go. Today's race on Fox, presented by Domino's Pizza, is sponsored by Chevy. The most wins in NASCAR history, an American revolution. Presently, Denny Hamlin's Chevy leads David Stremme's Dodge, Jamie McMurray's Ford, and David Rudeman's Toyota. All four makes in the front four here at Talladega with 43 laps to go. Let's go trackside to Jeff Hammond for today's State Farm Safety Report. As Ward Burton coasts in, he's lost the engine. When it comes to super speedway racing, we're always wondering whether it's going to be the big one or the spectacular one. For that reason, NASCAR came up with the use of restrictor plates. Now let me explain to you one more time what a restrictor plate actually does. Imagine this with our demonstration with the folks from Canyon Filters, that this is a manifold, air flowing through it, making 100% of the horsepower, over 835, 840 horsepower. But now when you put the restrictor plate on, automatically, it cuts that airflow down and it cuts the horsepower in half. That's right, reducing almost 50% of the horsepower. Now, you might wonder, it's for the safety of the drivers? Of course, but more importantly, for the safety of the fans. Thanks, Jeff. Great explanation on how the restrictor plate reduces the airflow. And the reason he mentioned the fans, what started the carburetor restrictor plate right here, roughly 20 years ago, 1987, Bobby Allison just about went in the grandstands before the era of restrictor plates. And, and you know, we the fans are so, for our fans are so fortunate. They can feel it. They can touch it. They can smell it. And that's because the cars are going right by them, right next to them. There's your front four. And everybody represented, all four of the manufacturers in Nextel Cup. Well, we've got some uh, different players at the front of the field, and we've got our favorites, Tony Stewart sixth, Junior's eighth, and uh, Jeff Gordon has fallen way back. How about our leader, Dick Bergman? Well, Denny Hamlin, like so many other competitors today, Mike, has had trouble with his engine overheating. When he gets out front, as he is right now, the water temperature drops as much as 50 degrees. So he wants to be out front. A very unique car. This morning, Mike Ford, his crew chief, told me it's different than any plate car that they have ever had. Chassis and body. The basic chassis is very old, but a lot of changes to it. And today, it's working well, Steve Burns. Hey, Dick, David Stremme just uttered my most famous line in racing. His crew chief, Mike Kalanoff, or spotter rather, Mike Kalanoff said, you have a great car, stay in line. And David, David Stremme said, you let me know when there's 10 laps to go and I'm gonna let it eat. <laughs> <laughs> that could be good and that could be bad. Yeah. There better be a lot of room at depending the table. On, depending on what he's gonna eat, I reckon. <laughs> Thirty nine laps to go in the Aaron's four ninety nine at Talladega. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Today's race presented by Domino's Pizza is sponsored by Budweiser, the official beer of NASCAR. This is Budweiser. This is beer by Wrangler, makers of Wrangler Jeans Company. New fits, new comfort, new styles. 
by the auto parts experts at AutoZone. Get in the zone. AutoZone and by McDonald's. Crank it up, Gene. Hold the pretty wheel. Green, 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 green. We're going right. All right in front of you. One push. Go, 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 go. Outside like going on me. Go, 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 go. Clear out, clear out, clear out. Go, 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 go. Push him, go. 36 laps to go. Denny Hamlin remains your leader, and David Stremme on the right center of your screen. The second place car, Jamie McMurray, David Rudiman, Greg Biffle are the top five in Talladega. As we get down to the final 100 miles of this race, aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear, helping NASCAR drivers get to the finish line for the past 25 years. Goodyear, get there. The complexion of this race has changed. We had 350 miles of three wide racing. Look what we've got now. Daryl, I don't know how long it's been since we've seen this. No, living on the high line here, boys. And, and, and you know, it can only be a couple of things. Okay, so who decided we're going to do this? I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe the leader. But the other thing, I look back here and I see Tony Stewart. I see Matt Kenses. I see Jeff Gordon. They're all riding at the back of this line. Are they riding along saving fuel? Are they riding? Is it the rope -a dope Are they laying on the back here waiting to make their charge? What do you think? Let's find out from the pole sitters crew chief. Here's Dick. And right now he's in conversation with one of the other crew members. And as soon as Steve Latart gets off that conversation, I'm going to ask him the question that was on Daryl's mind. Are you guys just hanging out in the back, conserving fuel, ready to go till the end? Or is that all the car's got? Well, we've lost too many races here with 10 to go to know we have to go right now. We're going to, they're not going to stay single file forever. So right now is a great time to save fuel, hopefully make it to the finish. How do you save fuel and pass cars too? Well, you know, they're punching a real big hole in front of us, so I don't think we're in the problem very much. Right now, they're just towing us along. We are hearing from a lot of people on pit road that fuel is very, very tight. Several can't make it. Thanks, Dick. They'll have to run 52 laps to make it to the finish from the last gas stop. Daryl, is this a matter of after two crashes, one for Casey Mears and then a five-car pileup, did everybody just tell their drivers, all right, enough of this, get in line for a while? I, you know, the, I think it's just everybody's taking a deep breath and getting ready to go to the final 10 laps. I think that's what it really is. I, you heard Latart say, last year they were leading this race coming to the white flag, and they ended up 15th. I believe that the smart guys are back there saying when they go three wide, when they start racing, we can come from behind, get a draft up to the front better than we can hold them off. Well, Kevin Harvick in that 29 car, he proved in the Daytona 500, maybe leading is not the place to be on the white flag lap. That's right. He came out of nowhere with five to go to win it. How about the car right in front of Harvick, the number one of Martin Truex? Here's Matt. Truex and Kevin Bonomanion have gone to victory lane here in a bush car trying to get their self in position for a cup win, which would be their first. But they, like so many others, Mike Joy, concerned about fuel, the average up and down pit road, anywhere from two to five laps short. Well, this place, you know, Matt and Mike Larry, this place is famous for first time winners. And, buddy, we got a few of them up there right now. And we're riding with one of them that would love to accomplish that today. Had a great run in the Bush Series race, the 42 car of Montoya. And he made his very first stock car start here in an ARCA race last fall. Qualified second, finished third. Well, in the top ten, you got you got uh, Strimmy, you got David Rudiman, who's doing an outstanding job. You got Martin Truex, and you got Juan Pablo. I mean, you got guys that are candidates for their first win here. Nine drivers have scored their first win here. Kenny Schrader, Brian Vickers, Richard Brickhouse, who won the inaugural Talladega race, Lenny Pond, Ron Bouchard, Dick Brooks, Bobby Hillen, Phil Parsons, and Davey Allison, the only Rookie of the Year candidate to ever win at Talladega. Daryl and Mike and Larry, we've been talking all day long about how we've had a couple of little storms, but not the big one. But here we are coming down with 31 laps to go. And this is a great strategy for everybody to kind of sit back here at cooler jets. But when are you going to get ready to go? Five laps to go, I think that's not enough time. Probably around 10 laps to go, you got to believe that these guys are going to start pressing the point. And DW, you said early on, you got to find the right dance partner. And here at this place, you're doing the rumba, baby, not the one man tap dance. Yeah, well, the first thing I got to know is can I make it on fuel? That's going to determine a whole lot about what I do. Well, I think Matt knows there's one car up there in that top 10 that can make it, Matt. 
Larry Mack, Mike Nelson, and the 12 crew guys been working the calculators, and they just told Ryan, figuring on our worst mileage that we have had all day, we are right at making it, except if we go into a green-white checker situation, which would be overtime in NASCAR Nextel Cup Series competition. It's just always something. Yes. <laughs> just when I thought I had it figured out. 29 laps to go when they come by. David ha Denny Hamlin still out front of David Stremme. Hey, do you spell Talladega with two L's or one? You might want to ask Ricky Bobby. I like the way you're drafting, Tony Boy. It's smart. I don't like the way you keep talking. Diga, Diga, baby, Talladega. <laughs> smell that? Dirty air. Man, I thought that was your breath. <laughs> A lot of debris was laying up in turn number two, and that brings us under caution. The reason? Juan Pablo Montoya got up and into the wall, perhaps after contact from Ryan Newman here. You can see the speed difference right there on Montoya in the 42 car, Ryan Newman in the 12. It was about five, six miles an hour difference, Newman being the faster car. And that really pancaked the right side of his Havilah number 42. Oh, mighty fast right there. He got on that concrete and he couldn't yeah. get it stopped. Couldn't get a boat up. You know, uh, Ryan Newman and the 42 do have a history uh, with running into each other. Juan's very first start at Homestead Miami Speedway the end of last year. Now what you saw on the apron there was the right front fender of Newman's car. Now Mike, what will be interesting, we know some guys were close on fuel. Now these cautions will buy you more time. I think we'll have some guys, as you see, it looks like about half and half, a lot of them coming to pit road, Steve, to top off. Larry Mack, David Stremme had to pit. His crew chief, Stephen Lane, said we were going to be two to three laps short anyways, and if it went green-white checkered, we'd be in trouble. you got to be careful here on pit road because everybody's on a different agenda. Krista. Mack has a fuel only. He's so cool, so calm on the radio. That was the call from Robbie Reiser. Just gas. Dick? Jeff Gordon pit fuel only. They were very close to not being able to make it. Matt? Jimmy Johnson took just fuel only. And there's no question, fuel only is the way to go. Get that thing full and get out of there. You change tires, you take a chance of a vibration. Lug nut loose, tires are not doing a thing. 32 cars on the lead lap. 24 laps to go in Talladega. Today's Race on Fox, presented by Domino's Pizza, is sponsored by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. We'll pick you up by DLP, HDTV powered by DLP. It's amazing, it's the mirrors. By Domino's Double Zero Deal, the official pizza of NASCAR. And by Toyota, moving forward. Brian Newman back on track after crash damage repair. Montoya's car being worked on, it may return. The first 10 cars in line did not pit. Leader Denny Hamlin and other drivers moved up in the running order like McMurray, Rudiman, Biffle, Dale Jr., Regan Smith, David Reagan, Tony Raines, and Reed Sorensen, Sterling Marlin. So the first car that made a stop is David Stremme, who is currently in 11th place. So for sure, everyone from 11th on back can make it on fuel. First through 10th is a little bit of a gamble. There's the distance. Yeah, Rudiman, or, uh, uh, gosh darn it, Stremme, he couldn't make it. He had to stop, so that worked out great for him. But if any of those top 10 were close, remember, it's about two to one caution to green. They probably feel like they have the insurance now. From our DLP Ultimate Picture Cam, we're back to green. Now, I'm going to be surprised. We can't stay single file running this high line very much longer, Mike, I don't think. 23 laps to go. Fuel not in question. I think that's going to be the difference right there. Now the guys that were riding can go racing. 
And Daryl, I am seeing a gang already get together on the bottom side. You see Kevin Harvick, that 29 car, pushing Kurt Busch in the two. I think the high line deal is pretty much over with for the entire field. Here they go, mixing it up. Yeah, I, I just believe what was going on there was these cats that were a little close on fuel were just riding along saying, okay, we'll hang here for a while. But I think it's time to go. Look at Tony Stewart flying around the outside with his uh, buddy back there behind him, Jeff Gordon. Nick Bergeron. Mike Ford let his driver, Denny Hamlin, out in the lead. Do you have enough fuel? Are you sure you have enough fuel to make it to the end? Well, our, uh, the mileage we've gotten all day is, is right there at it. You know, odds are this hadn't been the last caution. So um, right now, if it stays green, we should be right there, very, very close. Um, Green-white checker would be a little, little bit of a gamble, but, uh, you know, we came here to win. And uh, here at Talladega, second's the first loser. <laughs> I think there's a movie somewhat similar to that. But, um, yeah, we came here to win, and the best place to be is out front. You know, we, we uh, pit at Daytona and got back in traffic with 50 laps to go and ended up in an accident and, you know, decided try not to let that happen again. And the best place to be at Talladega is out front, so that's where we put it, and uh, hopefully that's where we stay. All right, Steve Burns. Wonderful job. Let's talk about your strategy to the end of this race. Well, uh, our Toyota Domino's car has been uh, awful good today, and David's done a great job. Um, this is just how good our team really has been. Uh, we just haven't gotten the brakes. And um, we're good to the end on fuel, and we're going to stay in line and see what happens at the very end. Good luck. Thank you. They're in third place behind Hamlin's Chevy and McMurray's Ford. Now, Daryl, everyone decided to go back to the top side. The real loser on that was Kurt Busch in the two car. He was left on the bottom side. He's going to go all the way back, almost outside the top 15. That's all it takes. One guy to be the loser, and everybody says, whoa, I don't like the looks of that. So here we are, snaking our way around here. Look, he's all the way back to 24th and was up there getting close to the lead just about a lap and a half ago. Got 20 laps to go. Riding with Tony Raines, currently in the top 10. That's rookie David Reagan just ahead. Krista? Well, the caution was not good news for the 96. That's because they were confident that they could make it to the end. In fact, they were one of the very few. A lot of guys thought they could. They gave me maybes, a shrug. Not Brandon Thomas. He said, nope, we can make it. So they stayed out. They are one of the cars that did not come in, getting very good fuel mileage, a very good run for the 96. And Krista, remember, we're kind of comparing him to Denny Hamlin in the 11 car. They run engines both from Joe Gibbs Racing, the engine shop there. Jeff Burton came out for one lap and then went to pit road and stopped after crash damage repair. They crossed the line with 19 to go. Krista. Or excuse me, Steve Burns. Hey, Mike, and our Ford bold move early in this race, Greg Biffle was near the rear of the field. He complained about them having the wrong gear, and he also talked about whether or not to pull the chip, talking about the rev limiter situation and Daryl I'm curious how do they actually pull the chip well it's in the ignition box over there uh, Steve and it's very easy to do it's like changing a fuse in your uh, dash panel you just reach over and pull that thing out it's like a fuse and that uh that bypasses that and you don't have to worry about it anymore and the only reason you would run that here is if you miss a shift leaving pit road but it sounds like to me they have what they feel too low of a gear that the thing really won't get up there and run on the top end of the straightaway in the draft turning too many rpm but you see this guy running right here in second spot you know i think it's been like the last four races here maybe even five that he was leading on the white flag lap and hadn't won one of them yet and here he is again right here at the front of the field and Dick had a great run going in the Daytona 500 before he got crashed out. Yeah, indeed. Jamie McMurray has been 156 starts since he last won. He is in position certainly to win today's event, but for much of the afternoon, they have been troubled with a vibration. It is definitely not a tire or a wheel. They've made pit stops since that vibration began. They've been under the car. They have been all over it. They can't find it. Imagine this. Victory in sight, and the car is shaking. Well, Dick, you know what I tell him with 18 to go? You got what you got, buddy. You're going to have to live with it. I tell him to let her shake, rattle, and roll is what I tell him. Got what you got. I want to go get some. I want to be here and see the finish, and we will.
Welcome back to Talladega. 14 laps to go. As they whistle around here at 195 miles an hour, and Denny Hamlin is still in the lead. Nextel helps NASCAR and NASCAR fans get things done. Time for our Nextel getting it done call of the race. Daryl. Well, I love old Larry Boy Carter, the crew chief on the 26, but I got to go for free pizza, boys. I got to go <laughs> with David Rudeman. All right, caution comes out. We believe a cowl flap has come off Ryan Newman's car. That's what you saw as we came back from break. And that is what metal and fiberglass there and certainly would cause a hazard. Oh, yeah, they need to get that up. No question. Let's and look at the very top of your screen at the yellow Kodak car. See it flapping around there and then all of a sudden there it goes. That's the cow flap that goes right underneath the windshield. It's part of the aero package with right. the car turns around backwards. It helps keep keeps it on the ground. Larry, your pick for a call of the race. We've had 77 carburetor restrictor plate races. There's three drivers that had made all of those races up until today. One of them's Mark Martin. He's not here. But how about the guy that was put in that ride here in a ride that finished second in the Daytona 500? I'm going to go with Regan Smith making his third start of the year. Ryan Pemberton, that Army 01 car. You heard from Mike Ford a little earlier. He's Denny Hamlin's crew chief. And I think leaving Hamlin out at the front of the pack when all the rest of the top 10 came in for fuel, keeping Hamlin in clean air and away from the snarling pack behind. Pretty good call. Yeah, yeah. I would say good all call. of those guys and teams are getting it done just like next day. So caution is out for the sixth time today. Bobby Labonte gets the free pass and Labonte is now back on the lead lap. He had a flat tire early and got three laps down. Now he's a lead lap car again. You know, that was actually the entire Cal opening the yeah. whole piece below the windshield. But let's go down to Dick Bergen. We were talking about Denny uh, Hamlin and Mike Ford, and indeed Mike Ford just got on the radio and told his driver, who is currently in the lead, that everybody behind him is scared to get out of line for fear they're going to drop back. Hamlin said he certainly knew about that, that every time he had dropped out of line, he went straight to the back. This is playing right into the hands of the 11 car, who periodically is taking it out of gear and coasting to save fuel. Well, look at Dick. He's drafting the pace car at 70 miles an hour to save gas. Th yeah. These cautions are his best friend. I mean, I think he's going to be in good shape. I do, too. Well, let's see who's checking in at the Hollywood Hotel. And anticipating an interesting finish here with a dozen laps to go. Just a quick recap of some of the more recent cautions, wrecks that have had an effect on things. And they thought, at least Casey Mears, that the Hendrick cars, as he hits into the wall, was okay. Casey walked away with Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson running up front. They were all pitting together, a lack of communication, not by design. And then Tony Rains watched closely, kind of getting close enough to Jimmy Johnson, who gets into Ricky Rudd. And then this is as close as we've come today to the big one. That's Kyle Busch, who's had a rough stretch of things. And you see Jeff Burton in the 31 car. Everybody was OK, but nine cars were involved. It's been a rough stretch for Kyle Busch. Yeah, thank goodness for safer barriers on the inside now. I mean, it's so important right now for those drivers involved in that wreck right there. They all walked away. All right, Jeff, but the chances of seeing a single file racing for a finish here, slim to none? Slim to none, my friend. I can promise you that right now. Some guys back here like Greg Biffle, Dale Earnhardt Jr., they're just waiting for the right lap to make their move. Our uh, Best Buy race summary, as you see, and a, a number of lead changes, 40. That's uh, the most we've had this season. You saw a couple of the caution flags uh, making it six as the total. The story of the race, Tony Stewart coming in along with uh, Jeff Gordon. They're running 13th and 14th as Stewart has been up and back and forth. Where are they or what are their chances at this stage of the game? Again, I think you're looking at guys like Tony Stewart, Kevin Harvick, along with Jeff Gordon. They're waiting on the guys up front to make a move so they can jump out there and go with them and make a move up there closer to the front with just a few laps. How many go. laps are we going to have when we take the green? Next week on Fox, a special presentation. A Saturday doubleheader starts with baseball at 3.30 Eastern and then under the lights, Saturday night racing at Richmond. Dale Earnhardt Jr., your winner there. The last time around, in fact, that's the last cup race the junior has won Saturday. You'll see on speed and then earlier in the day at 5 Eastern, the race at 7 o'clock Eastern, and we'll all be there to bring the action to you. Now, right, get ready for the finish. Let's go back upstairs, D.W., Larry, and Mike.
to answer Tony Stewart's question you heard over his in-car radio, they will restart with 10 laps to go. Here's another important number, 19. 19 days to the All-Star race. I think I'm correct about that. I did my math real quickly. And we're going to see 10 lap shoot out here. You're going to see a 10 lap shoot out <laughs> there too. Well, let's see what kind of wisdom David Rudiman is receiving. All right, McMurray and Bipple both want you to keep running the top. He said no matter what the eight and the one do, they're going to stay to the top. All right, we're staying with that 26 and the 16. No matter what, save fuel, buddy. You know, Daryl, you mentioned the all-star race. I look at a couple of cars up there in second and third, McMurray in the 26, David Rudiman in the double zero. There's several ways to get in the all-star race. One of those guys could secure it here today. I wonder if they've thought about that. You talk about long shots at Talladega, Daryl, and we read a list of drivers, many of whom have their only win here. A foreign nameplate has not won a NASCAR race since the early 1950s, Rudiman's Toyota could become only the second in all of NASCAR history to do that. And what about Dodge? Reed Sorensen is ninth, David Stremme is 10th. A Dodge has not won here since 1976. Dave Marcus was the driver. So long shots, long odds, but this is Talladega where anything can happen. That's what this place is all about. Well, I keep telling Michael that, you know, one good weekend could change everything. He's talking to, that's Casey Mears talking to Steve Latart there about what happened on that miscommunication. Mears thought the other Hendrick drivers were pitting with him. It wasn't what happened. Mike, right. we have six in the top ten that have never been to victory lane in the next Elk Cup race right now. Ten laps to go in the Aaron's 499. It is crunch time at America's fastest speedway. We're under green. This takes so much discipline to hold your position and time it right. You're either going to be a hero or a zero. Hopefully, hopefully not a double zero. <laughs> <laughs> when the first driver up toward the front drops out of line, if someone goes with him immediately to establish a draft, he's got a chance. If not, he'll drop to the back faster than you can talk about it. I, I think you heard from uh, Denny Hamlin that, you know, he, he already knows that when you drop to the bottom, you're going to get sacked. That's why he took it to the top, and everybody's been up there with him ever since. The wild card in that pack is the driver who has won five of the last dozen here. Dale Earnhardt Jr., driver number eight. Of all those guys up there, you got to believe that he knows what he's going to do no matter what anybody else does. I think the others are going to be a reactors. I think he is the actor in the crowd. What we used to call him, the Pied Piper. Yes, sir. If he moves, drivers will follow as you watch from our Goodyear aerial coverage. Goodyear helping NASCAR drivers get to the finish line for the past 25 years. Goodyear, get there. And that finish line is coming in just nine laps. And Darrell, we talked about Regan Smith right now in that 01 car, the team that ran second in the Daytona 500. I believe I'm definitely going to tell him. Here they go, down there, to the bottom. You just heard him. And we're off <laughs> to the races. <laughs> They'll be coming to eight to go. You see Jimmy Johnson, the 48, Tony Stewart in the 20, Gordon in the 24, down to the bottom and they go. Now, we're, here's what's going to happen when that 41 car closes that hole up high. They got nowhere to go. What are they going to do then? Jimmy Johnson saw the light. He jumped back to the outside. But there's Tony and Jeff Gordon. I don't know, boys. Backing up. And we've got eight to go, about seven and a half laps to go. We're getting a slight report. David Rudiman in the double zero. Maybe a little bit of smoke in his cockpit. It doesn't matter. You got to go. Now there's a tight draft on the bottom lane, and they're pushing forward once again. Just a nice soft push. And you see Jimmy Johnson once again. He's trying to get in the right lane here. He was up high. He's down low, waiting for the push. Got to have the push. And Reed Sorensen in that 41 car, he slammed right down in front of Tony Stewart in that 20 car. Suck up behind that 48 car of Jimmy Johnson. They'll be coming to seven to go this time. Oh, it's getting getting pretty now. I like yeah, the way it's shaping up. They're triple wide once again, just like they were for the first 350 miles, Dick. 
Junior had been taking it easy for about the last 20 laps because he was very close on fuel, Mike. I just talked to his car chief, Tony Gibson, who said they should be good to go. And Junior ought to go anytime now. He He's going his way. <laughs> Here comes the Pied Piper. Here outside we go. now, outside and inside. This is when it gets, this is when you earn your money right here, boys. We're riding with him, that's David Strimi in the 40 car, giving that little bump draft going off into turn three. And you see the 11 car has now dropped to the bottom. He sees what's going on behind him. Now he's going to have to start blocking. Through the tri-oval where the finish line is at Daytona, here. It's a lot further down toward turn one. The finish line is here. The finish, six uh -oh. laps away. Uh oh, McMurray says, okay, enough of this. And he's going to try to make the pass. And does. Jamie McMurray. And he's got help from his teammate, David Reagan, in that sixth car. Here comes Earnhardt Jr. in the eighth car. He'll go to the bottom of the racetrack. They got nothing for the eighth car. I see that coming. You. He's got it. And Stremme comes Clear all the way high. up to four. Jeff Gordon, fifth. Junior gives McMurray a playful bump toward turn three. I saw Junior when he came from the back of the pack earlier to the front. He's been playing some mind games, boys. But here comes that 24 car, David Streamy trying to block him down on the bottom side. He can't do it. Here he comes with help from his teammate. Yeah, don't, don't tug on Superman's cape. Jeff Gordon won the pole. He's had a fast car all day, and he's got help. Five to go. Five. And all McMurray can do is drive out the rearview mirror. That's all he can do leading this race right now. He's got a good race car. I saw that in practice on Thursday. He, or Friday, he had a great car. But I don't think he can hold off that eight car. Did Jamie McMurray get to the front too soon? I, I, I like what he did. He had no choice. He was going to get sacked either way. Oh, Hamlin got a bump. And well, he almost got out of shape. Hamlin was trying to get into the line behind the uh, Jeff Gordon so he could go forward. That outside line is still holding together pretty darn good. We got 29 cars within a second of each other. They'll be coming to four to go this time. Smoke, Rudiman. Oh, no. What's happening to David? Remember, we had a report that he had smoke in the cockpit. Oh, that's tearing up. Let them all come by. He's oh. loading up. I think I heard rear end tearing up. Two more coming. All right, you're clear all the way to the bottom. Clear all the way to the bottom. Oh, David. No caution yet. No. Oh, it blew up. Caution will wave. This is not what the 11 car wanted to see. Remember, Mike Ford talked about didn't want to see a green-white checker. Just as Jeff Gordon took the lead, caution comes out. Goodness gracious to me. <laughs> now, NASCAR has a rule. We're at four laps to go. That if we get to the end of the scheduled race distance and we're not under green, we're under caution, they will make one attempt to finish the race under a green-white checker situation. Green flag, white flag next time by, checkered flag. We've called it overtime. We've called it checkers or wreckers. We've got a very uniquely NASCAR name for this way to finish the race. We're going to call it overdrive. Overdrive. I'm with you. Now, is it 24 ahead of the 26? It depends, Daryl, on where they were when they crossed the scoring loop immediately prior to the waving of the caution flag. Well, that could be very critical as well. Yes, it could. And we'll have to wait for word from timing and scoring. But now, three laps to go under yellow. They won't start next time by. They've got to clean up. So we will go into overdrive here at Talladega. But going back to David Rudeman, that double zero car, I know they're disheartened, but you know what? For an organization that has struggled so much this year, Michael Walter Racing, they need to walk out of here with their head up. I, I said earlier, I don't like one good weekend could, get, could erase all these things that have happened, and they almost had it. The race leader is the pole sitter, Jeff Gordon. He had taken the lead from Jamie McMurray prior to the caution flag. So Gordon, who is trying to eclipse Dale Earnhardt's place on NASCAR's all-time win list and could do so with a victory today, it would be his 77th. He is the leader, and we will race two laps when we get this cleaned up. Here's the list. Richard Petty with 200, David Pearson 105. Bobby Allison, Darrell Waltrip, and Kelly Arborough tightly packed in the low 80s. Earnhardt and Gordon. That's all my heroes. It's all my heroes right there on that one list. Let's show you while we're under caution about how Jeff got win number 76 last Saturday night at Phoenix. The caution had come out for a wreck involving Dave Blaney up in turn number four. 
Tony Stewart was the race leader as Jeff Gordon came onto pit road prior to the caution flag, which then happens here. Blaney, the 22, is slowing, trying to get to pit road. He gets tagged and turned. The caution comes out. Gordon is making his way to his pit. From this camera, here's the line he has to cross to stay on the lead lap. Crew chief and spotter decide plenty of time to make the stop, get the four tires, see the circle. That's Tony Stewart. Clearly, Gordon got off pit road before Stewart came around to that point. So Gordon stayed on the lead lap. Then, when all the lead lap cars pitted under the caution flag, once pit road opened, Jeff Gordon pulled up behind the pace car and the cars that had not stopped, and he's the race leader. And no argument from anyone on that, but it is hard to explain without showing it to you. And thanks for bringing that video back from that hard camera in turn one. And I talked to Tony Stewart last night. He came by my motor coach and we chatted. He said, Larry, I never questioned was Jeff Gordon not still on the lead lap. I right. knew that he had beat me to that line. He said, when I saw the caution, there's a chance maybe I slowed down too much but I did what I thought I should do. Yeah, it almost makes you wonder, like speeding down pit road to keep him going a lap down, it almost makes you wonder, should Tony Stewart have sped around the racetrack, but then he had, had to go to the back of the pack. Right, Stewart's frustration, it turned out, were with some of the debris cautions last Saturday night, and his failure to report to the media center earned him a $10,000 fine this week. But we talked about the ironies of today's race. One of the ironies was that Stewart paid a penalty for speeding on pit road. How did he get back on the lead lap? A caution for debris. And one of the things, Mike, that I think all of us old school folks can't get in our minds is the start finish line is not really the determining factor. It's they don't once the field is frozen, then you can't race back to the start finish line like we did in the old days. So that's why Tony had to slow down. Let's go one step further with about nine cars that are out there, which would include Denny Hamlin, Jamie McMurray, Greg Biffle, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Regan Smith, David Reagan, Rain Sorensen, and Marlon. Remember, that's cars that elected to stay out on that last caution. And when you can get in the most trouble is remember the fuel pickup that picks this fuel up in the fuel cell in the trunk is in the right rear corner because as you go through the corner at speed, it slings it over there. 33 degrees of banking right now under caution. Fuel might be running away from that pickup. Cautions can cause you more problems sometime when you're low on fuel. You can see them right there running around the apron, not getting up on that banking, trying to keep the fuel over to the pickup. So some of those cars may need fuel before this one's over. The green white checker won't start until the track is cleaned and then we'll have one chance to finish this race under green in overdrive. Right of your screen, Denny Hamlin, Tony Raines, they had to come in for fuel. They yep. had enough to make the scheduled distance, but not enough fuel for the two laps of overdrive that Boy. we're going to try to finish this off with. You're talking about disappointment at the end of this race, and we haven't even gotten to the checkered flag yet. Here's the 11 car sitting there with the chance to win. And we got the double zero car sitting there with a chance for a great finish. And just in a matter of minutes, they're all they're they're in trouble. There are still six cars out there that have still not been to pit road in basically almost 52 laps. And that includes right now Jamie McMurray in second place, Biffle, Earnhardt Jr., uh, David Reagan, Reed Sorensen, Sterling Marlin. Those guys are still out there on the fuel that's been there for almost 52 laps. And Larry, we're a, I don't know if we're anywhere near getting ready to go here or not. The cars are halfway down the back straightaway and they're still blowing the first turn down here. Now that two laps to go at the top of your screen, that won't start counting down until the green flag is has been waved. See Junior kick his car out of gear and coast. Jack Roush, who owns McMurray's car. Chevy Ford, Chevy Dodge up at the front. And a conference among the Hendrick teams. And a lot of crew chiefs wondering what will happen next. Chris Myers asked at the top of the show, will we see another great finish today? Little doubt of it now that we go into the, the two laps of green white checker and we've had some great finishes already but one to go right now in this season of just eight races on Fox. This is it folks. Holy cow. He's going to move him. He's going to move him. Here comes the inside. He's got the inside. They touch once, twice. Drag race. Jimmy Johnson. 
This is it, boys. Burton on the inside. Kinsley on the outside. He got it. He got it. He got it. Jeff Burton. That is incredible. Gordon goes to the inside. He's going to take the lead back. Jeff Gordon. Finally. Oh, yeah. What a season so far. With NASCAR on Fox, remember next Saturday night under the lights, Richmond, Virginia, as the flagman signals one to go. He is pointing one finger down. That means they will line up single file for this restart. Lead lap cars to the front. And then they'll wave the green flag. Next time by the white and finally the checker. Now, if a yellow flag should wave, the field is frozen, the race is over. But instead of reverting, to the last loop passed before the caution for the finish of the race. NASCAR will use all available video and other evidence to determine where the cars are at the moment of caution. And that's the end of it in overdrive. Let me tell you a guy that's in between a rock and a hard place. That's Jimmy Johnson. He's got Jamie McMurray in between he and his teammate Jeff Gordon. If he pulls out and tries to go with uh, Jamie McMurray, what if McMurray won the race and caused Jeff Gordon not to? So Jimmy's sitting there, he's got a really tough decision to make. I, I think someone behind him will probably end up making this decision for him. Well, he's got to have some, you know, he's got to think about uh, the big picture racing, as we like to say. Jimmy Elledge decided to bring Reed Sorensen to pit road that time and top him off. And we're getting more bad news for those cars that are still out there. They have waved off the one to go. So that's another lap that four or five of these cars are going to have to run, including Dale Earnhardt Jr. And, and the problem with that is now if you, well, you don't want to run out of gas in front of the field. You don't want to run out of gas with somebody inches away from your rear bumper. going to go green this time by however cleanup was still underway and NASCAR needs to be sure of getting all I, of I ain't losing fuel pressure in the corner yeah so should be dropping a pound or probably and NASCAR needs to make sure all the safety equipment he saved it like he's supposed to they want to get all that equipment back behind the wall before they wave the green for the restart so one more lap under caution Dick Bergeron and Jeff Gordon has been told to conserve fuel even though he had topped off earlier, Mike. The reason being, uh, Steve Letart is afraid that some people are going to run out of fuel, get stuck on the racetrack, and this thing is going to keep going until they get that car off the racetrack. So it may be a while before we see the checkered flag, at least according to Steve Letart. Absolutely no reason, regardless if you topped off or not, not to be saving fuel under this caution. You never know what might happen. I think it's just an interesting bunch of cars in front of the field right now. If you've got questions, ask Tom Jensen. He's our answer man. Log on to FoxSports.com on MSN, keyword answer. Just don't ask him who's going to win. We've got a few laps to wait to find out. you got some guys up there that are hungry. I can tell you that. Jamie McMurray, would he not like to win another race? What's it been? He's won one race five years ago, 2002. David Gilliland, our outside pole sitter, running in fifth spot. Would he not like to win his first race? You better believe it. He's just been quietly hanging out all day. He long. has. How about Kurt Busch? A Dodge hasn't won a plate race in 30 years, and he's never won one in 26 attempts. How about Penske his... Racing has never won a restrictor plate race, with the exception of the Budweiser shootout at Daytona with Rusty one time. Kevin Harvick, who won the Daytona 500 who started in the next to last row. Can well, we come to the front. <laughs> we saw him at Daytona. Man, yeah. he came from nowhere at Daytona to drag race with Mark Martin to the finish line to win. And of course, we remember what happened behind him too. And we're getting ready to settle it, boys. We're going into overdrive, folks. Green, white, checker to finish it off in Talladega. If you're gonna get Jeff Gordon, you gotta get him now. Yes, you sir. You cannot let him get up to speed, regardless of where the start finish is. I tell that. you. But Jeff Gordon can't get a big restart and get away from the pack because then they'll draft on by him. I think McMurray is gonna try to jump all over him like a frog on a jiribo. Green flag, Johnson to the inside. And there goes Kurt Busch in the two car with him, pushing him, they're gonna trap McMurray in the 26 on the high side. Boy, I'll say, look at him fan out. High, low, high, low. Somebody help me. 
Oh. There goes Stewart, the 20 to the high side with no help. They're three wide off. Turn trouble. Up. It's, it's, trouble. Trouble. it's over. There's the caution. There is the caution right there. Only one attempt at this green-white check. And Stewart has crashed. While everyone lifted for the caution flag, Tony Stewart ended up in the wall. certainly know that Jeff Gordon, the 24 car, was leading this race at the time of caution. Now, one thing that differs from determining the restart order after a caution in the race is they'll go to where the cars were at the minute the caution came out as far as the finishing order, not where they crossed the last loop for the finish of the race. Let's see what happens here, because they were all coming up to speed, and there was a lot of blocking going on. You see Gilliland, I just saw him cut down in front oh, of Tony. Kenseth got into Sauter. Sauter's still okay. Four wide. Four wide, and no, oh, the 16 comes down, catches the 70, but there's action in front of these guys. Well, Elliot Sadler and the 16 got together. That's what caused the wreck, and but Sony, when everybody Tony, Right here, you see the 38 and Tony. Who tipped Gabe, David Gilliland around? Somebody must have, uh, was it 26? Ouch. Man, that's a hard, hard, hard hit, and we there's no a... safer barrier there. No, we may see from another angle who tipped Gilliman. They go way up there. I mean, the 16 Biffle just came down on Elliott Sadler, and Johnny Sauter, the 70, ended up being the victim there, and Elliott Sadler was able to continue. NASCAR will determine at what moment they lit up the caution lights to freeze the field and end the race. Stewart Tony, very yeah. unhappy. Not sure what that's about. We'll figure it out, though. Because somebody sure turned him. The wreck was behind him, but as the caution flew, a lot of people checked up. Let's see what happens. There's Tony on the high, up on the outside. They see a wreck behind him. McMurray. Somebody. Somebody got into the back of David Gilliland in that 38 car as well, which I think was all part of that equation right there. Boy, and then the, there, you see down here where Tony hits the wall, there's no safer barrier there. You can see it stops at that opening back there. That's a hard, hard driver lick. Oh, here we go. Here we go. 26 is there. The 38. The silver car. The 38 kind of coming up, and McMurray's kind of caught in a trap. Yeah, I mean, I know Tony's upset with Jamie right now. I'm not sure Jamie could do a whole lot about that. Checkered flag waves on Jeff Gordon, his 77th career NASCAR next Dell Cup victory. Jimmy Johnson second, Kurt Busch is third unofficially. Jamie McMurray, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Daytona winner Kevin Harvick, Gilliland, Stremme, Newman, and Truex, the top 10. You'll see the unofficial running order across the top of your screen. Well, I guess the fans didn't listen to Junebug because they see a lot of debris flying out on the racetrack. I just think that uh, Jeff Gordon winning the uh, Jeff Gordon's just on a roll this year, guys. He's got all the momentum. Uh, everything's going his way. He's had four poles. Uh, he's going to be hard, hard, hard to handle the all this year. And remember, this win right here, that's 10 more bonus points in his bank account, making 20 now to add to his 5,000 points when we get to the chase. Chevy congratulates Jeff Gordon, winner of today's race from Chevy, an American Revolution. A wild finish in Talladega. As Biffle, Sadler, crash coming out of turn two along with Sauter and Tony Stewart gets turned to the inside wall. Our Allstate Good Hands driver is Jeff Gordon taking the lead at lap 185 from Jamie McMurray just prior 
to David Rudeman's engine going up. And the final caution coming out. So on behalf of Jeff Gordon, Allstate will donate $1,000 to the Urban Youth Racing School. Allstate, official insurance sponsor of NASCAR. Are you in good hands? This fellow is. Dick Bergeron is in victory lane. And we've seen Jeff Gordon now in 77 victory lanes, but this may be his most enthusiastic ever. <laughs> High fives for the crew. 77 wins. The 77th coming on Dale Earnhardt's birthday. Your reaction. Uh, I'm overwhelmed. I, I, I mean, I, we just had uh, so many things working against us other than this race car. This DuPont Chevrolet was unbelievable today, but... Um, I, I never dreamed we were going to win that race, um, you know, towards the end there. We were just so far back, had too many guys, good guys we had to pass. And, uh, you know, just, just, I just didn't think we'd get 77 here. And I don't think, I think there's a lot of people out there that uh, didn't want us to. Um, I've never, never caused a riot before winning, but, uh, you know, well, maybe once or twice. But uh, <laughs> this is awesome. I'm just so proud of this whole entire team to get here to victory lane. Uh, you know, back to back, uh, you know, to do it at, at Phoenix in the, the Impala and then to do it here in the Monte Carlo. Unbelievable day. What's with the fans throwing stuff? What's going on? I don't know. I thought I thought Junior had more power than that, though, because I thought they were going to throw toilet paper. Uh, that's what he asked him to throw. And uh, I saw maybe one roll, but uh, I don't know. Uh, you know what? There's a lot of lot of fans out there that are big Earnhardt fans and uh, probably didn't want to see this uh, broken. And um, I know there's a lot of my fans out there as well. And so I appreciate their support. And I appreciate the enthusiasm and, and, and you know, the opinions of, of all the fans out there. So what are you going to do? You know, we're here to win. And uh, Steve Letard, all the guys in this DuPont Chevrolet, they did the job to get it done today. And uh, i got to thank Pepsi, Nicorette. Uh, I, I forgot to thank Sparkle last week and want to thank them, um, you know, GMAC, everybody. That, uh, that makes this thing happen, Pepsi and, and of course, DuPont. That they're so awesome to, uh, to be with us for 15 years. A lot of fun. Congratulations on a great drive on a great day. Mike Troy. Dale Jr. said he hated his fans throwing anything on the racetrack, but if you had to throw something, throw a roll of toilet paper. Nobody ever had to have stitches getting hit with a roll of toilet paper in the back of the head. During pre-race, the fans were admonished here by Grant Lynch, the president of the Speedway, that anyone throwing things on the track at the end of the race would be arrested. And it was encouraging to see sheriff's deputies handcuffing and leading out uh, some people who disrespected the sport and Jeff Gordon's win. When you're pre-warned and you do it anyway, that's asking for trouble if you ask me. The thing about it, though, we knew if you won this race, you were going to have to beat the Hendrick cars. They end up 1-2. But give a call out the Penske race, and they finished third and ninth. And how about Dale Earnhardt Incorporated on Dale Earnhardt Day? Dale Earnhardt Jr. finishes fifth. Martin Truex Jr., his teammate, finishes tenth. The 12th car didn't even have a fender on the right front. Still finished top or, ten. Or, or a cow close out. <laughs> or, or some other part, yeah. First win from the pole at Talladega since 1998, and the fourth straight win by Hendrick Motorsports in the spring Talladega race. Krista? She was a nassin. Well, speaking of toilet paper, Jamie McMurray would love to wipe his tears. That's because he could smell that win. A top five, a great finish, but a lot of finger pointing after some people pushing, some people shoving. Who was pushing who? Well, it was a good day for the Sharp Aquas uh, by QD Ford Fusion. We, uh, you know, I just, we ran out of gas coming to, uh, when I shifted from second to third, the the car stumbled real bad and the 48 got into me and I lost my momentum. And the, uh, you know, I was on the outside of the 38 and then the 20 got a huge run on the outside and um, the 38 was, was running me up and, you know, I had a nose in there. And when it's the last lap of the Speedway race, you've worked so hard all day to stay out of trouble and to, you know, try to put yourself in the right position. Um, I mean, I, I understand why Tony's mad. I'd be mad if I was in his shoes, too. It just, uh, I mean, it's just an unfortunate situation, and uh, I hate it for those guys. It's the last lap at Talladega. Matt Yoakum. Five-time Talladega winner, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Awesome top five finish for you and your team, what you guys have gone through today, but describe the final lap. Well, I was just trying to get in front of who was coming and try to get a push. We didn't have that good a, good a car to get up there and lead a whole lot, and uh, we struggled to run up front and uh, I was just you know I was just lucky to be up there when we were we stretched it on fuel mileage and a lot of guys like Denny and them guys ran out but we stretched it and saved as much as we could and we're able to get a top five I'm not sure if that's exactly where we finished I think it's unofficial but uh, you know wherever we finished that was a that was a good finish for us and <clears throat> we'll take the points I wanted to win but <clears throat> I couldn't hold them off it was just too fast thanks Dale thank you Steve Burns Matt, we've caught up with Tony Stewart, and uh, Tony, I know you want to take a look at the replay on our monitor. Uh, what was your perspective having not seen it yet? Uh, we just got crashed. Um, you know, we had to 
26 just inside of us and the uh, I think the 38 inside of him. So uh, you know, I want to I really want to see the replay before I really say anything though. All right, I don't know if we uh, here we go. Here's a replay, Tony. Take a look. Well, we walk, okay. We get well. Rex behind us too, but that's that's part of it that gets us in the wall, and then we get hit a second time. And we'll see who. Uh, you know, we, we've already crashed here. You know. Yeah, that's the aftermath. That's already after car got up into the side of you. And then the 38 car just plows us for no reason. So uh, I guess he's still mad for the bush race yesterday, but you know. No talent there, I guess. Take a look at the in car, Tony. Yeah, just like I saw it. I mean, get hit and get pushed in the wall. But, you know, we're done wrecking right there, and then all of a sudden we get jacked up by the 38 car for no reason. There was, there was absolutely no reason for that to happen. So he's, he ta he's just taking it out on us for yesterday when he turned down across the nose. So, uh, yeah. Lucked into his cup ride, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. Thanks for your patience. See you next week. Thanks, guys. Burns and Tony Stewart, who had been a story all week after not talking in Phoenix, and then when he did talk, uh, said some things about the way NASCAR was officiating, and uh, they quickly worked that out. In fact, he benefited from a debris caution earlier in the race. Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers here at the Hollywood Hotel. Another great finish. You know, who, see, this isn't wrestling. You can't script these kinds of things, right? Oh, no, you this can't. I told you this, thing, this place was, number one, dangerous, and number two, evil. If you don't believe me, right there at the end, it shows it all. All right, Darrell Walter pointed out at the time we had that last caution. I mean, Tony Stewart was back with Jeff Gordon. They made up some ground. So, how, in a nutshell, here, how did Jeff Gordon, and again, Hendrick Motorsports dominating here, and Jeff Gordon, where did he win this race? Right between his ears. Jeff Gordon is a smart race car driver. Experience comes into play, and you can say whatever you want to. He learned a lot from the great Dale Earnhardt. From racing against him and losing to him several times, he knew when to make the move, and he made the right way. He kept fighting that bottom, and he made the pass. And Jeff Gordon, as we check the unofficial results, uh, telling me that also handling booze and, and fans who are angry upset with him. He said Dale Earnhardt told him, hey, it's better to have them passionate one way or the other. They're not saying anything when you're out there. At least they know you're there. That's the problem. Well, we know the drive for five. Jeff Gordon with four Nextel championships, or actually I should say NASCAR championships, wants a Nextel Cup. And so far, through nine races, he's done a pretty good job he's of got about a little over 200-point lead by the way we calculated it up earlier that uh, he's looking strong early on. And uh, if they keep this momentum going, he and Steve Letart communicating, he's going to be hard to beat. Jeff Burton, who came in up there in points, uh, suffering in one of the crashes, unable to finish, as you see, uh, the way things rounded out. Next Saturday, a unique doubleheader on Fox, our Fox Saturday Baseball Game of the Week, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. You'll see the Yankees in action. You'll see the White Sox. Some will see the Giants and the Phillies. A couple of home run hitters there, and, of course, Barry Bonds chasing the all-time mark. You got to remember also next week we'll be back with the COT car at Richmond. And Jeff Gordon has never been beat basically out of the top five in the COT race. On Dale Earnhardt's birthday, would have been his 56th birthday. Dale Earnhardt Jr. giving it a run. His last win, by the way, at Richmond. It's been 35 races since Jr. has pulled into victory lane. And you check the points. So Burton stays at second despite a rough hit today. Tony Stewart.